Rival House Network. Woo! All right. Come on, killer. <laughs> Take off your fucking glasses, Matthew. He can't see without his fucking glasses. <laughs> really? <laughs> I can't come. I can't come. You're interrupting my concentration. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Hey, Woo! what's the matter, Matthew, baby? Uh, I can't. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to another BTM podcast. We got a commentary for y'all continuing the fashion of handling requests this month. We're going to be tackling I Spit on Your Grave. I know Zach loves this movie in particular. Yeah. I really wish we could have got River on for this one because this is one of the earliest movies that him and I shared as well. But it's classic. Yeah, here's the thing. See, uh, the thing is, uh, we press record. You, uh, you do your whole spiel. You introduce me, and then uh, I, I just follow the routine, right? So I'm trying to. Th- I'm, I already tried to do a new voice to Waz. Huh? Yo, this is on laid back, Zach. Yo, but, 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 but I'm just slipping back into the, the fucking troll. I can't do it. I can't fucking do. It. There's nothing I can do. It's taking over. <laughs> it really is. I mean, if uh, the last commentary that we did with Josh James is any indicator, it do that. You, it took over on that one for sure. And it, it was kind of a. It was if the troll version of you was in a bad mood too. Really, you were extra vitriolic, yeah. And Josh was talking about it during the episode, and uh, I know you couldn't really notice it, and I I could kind of notice it, but when I listened back to it afterwards, after it was dropped, and I, I'm like, oh wow, yeah, I fucking see it. It was. It was it was a little aggressive. Like I was like, oh, I think you need some edibles or something, man. You need to mellow mellow out. Mellow out, bitch. So we're gonna get started with this movie. I couldn't tell you who requested it, but I know it's been requested, and it's a classic we would have wanted to have gotten to anyway eventually. So we'll continue the banter as soon as we get started here. In three, two, one, play. Oh, hell yeah, the, this movie, dog. We're watching the fucking Anchor Bay Blu-ray release, Bible. So we're seeing the Anchor Bay logo. Uh, now we're seeing the movie. So if you, you didn't got that logo, you just started to, uh, where, where I said we're seeing the movie. And uh, this movie, dog, uh, we, right away we get a fucking shot in New York, Bible. Shaky cam, dude. Look at that. All the fucking sleazy fucking uh, moves these guys to the shots in New York. Does this movie predate the steady cam? Uh, probably, uh, that came out, uh, it was really new whenever they made, uh, Halloween, the original. The, the first movie that utilized it, at least, at least the first ho- bigger movie, well, it was a technically a budgeted movie, but Rocky was the first movie to use the mm. steady cam, like when he's running across the bridge, you know, and it's following yeah. him. Yeah. And they popularized it. Even if it was out here, they were just like, oh, we don't fucking care. We want it to look uh, organic. It was probably extremely expensive technology, too. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I was hoping the uh, fucking uh, I got the chance to listen to the Joe Bob Briggs commentary of this. I have it on my iPod uh, just uh, to freshen up before we did this so I can mention some of the same stuff he does so we can render his commentary, you know, fucking, you know, obsolete because uh, we always got to try to outdo the Joe Bob. Well, does he have a commentary like podcast? No, he did it on the Blu-ray, baby. Gotcha. Gotcha. You had it ripped. I see. That's a dog. And actually, Riverman and I, we listened to that one time. And I, like I said, it was, because it was on the original DVD too, right? It had to have been because we listened to it. Okay. He also did one for a uh, fucking, uh, well, uh, there was one I forgot what the title was. And he also did one for a fucking uh, Samurai Cop on a Blu-ray release of that, which I can't find. That's pretty cool. That'd be dog. I didn't tell you, man. So as of this recording, I don't know. We're we're kind of ahead of the game right now in a recording. I couldn't tell you what the date is that this one's going to drop. I think we're a couple deep. Yeah, how how's everybody liking that new uh, Resident Evil Two game? It's that's fun, isn't it? It's out now. <laughs> we're playing it. Hey, which by the way, 
I, I heard you couldn't get a hand on the the deluxe edition, or what were what were you seeking? Yeah, I can't fucking get it because. Uh, Are you just wanting the steel book or what? I just want the deluxe edition uh, because uh, I can't get. Uh, I don't get paid till Friday, and by then it'll be too late to get it and have it when it releases. So I'll just have to go to get fucking the standard edition on at Walmart. But I'm confused because I went on the Best Buy website when you said that they were out and they had them. I'm I'm lost. Yeah, I could get it all live, but I like it wouldn't. They don't have any at the store. I'd have to buy it online and have it shipped to my house, and I don't have the money yet. Oh, but Best Buy's pretty good about having your shit to you that day on release day. Yeah, but I don't got like the money to buy it right now, so oh. I get paid Friday or Thursday. Well, if you want, if you want me to get it and you can and spot you, I'll totally do that. Oh, you can spot me, bro. I would spot you, man, so you can have it. I mean, it's up to it's up to you. Oh, spot me, bro. Spot let me know. Me. I'm, I'm down. Okay. You're not gonna let that fucking dumbbell fall on my chest. You're there to spot me. Okay. And uh, do you want me to seriously? Hell yeah, if you can. Because I can get you the discount too, obviously. Yeah, I'll I'll have the buddy uh fucking Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. I'll do it. Uh, remind me after we're done recording this, and I'll and I'll hook it up. So. All right. Cool. Dog. But that game's already out, so uh, people uh, people are wondering what the bit we just did was. Uh, we're just joking. That game's already out. We've been playing it. <laughs> yeah. No. Seriously, though, we're a couple deep. Though we're trying to we're trying to get a couple deep and stay a couple deep because we're trying to prep for the whole Patreon thing. And I know, I know, we've talked about that and teased that and stuff. As of this recording, I mean, so hopefully, to hold myself accountable here. I'll sound like a big asshole if it's not, but Zach, we need to record our little pitch and sort of put it in the post edit on maybe this podcast. And since we're a couple deep, like I said, that gives us a week or so to really do uh, that. Yeah. So hopefully if I'm not a fucking piece of shit, you heard the spiel at the, at the top of the hour on this podcast. But if he, if he didn't, he's a fucking piece of shit. Basically is what he just said. That's exactly what I'm saying. So regardless <laughs> It's underway and we're trying to we're trying to get ahead of the game here, man, because we really want to get organized with the content. We want to be able to, like I said, push out more of this content, especially for the Patreon stuff. Uh so we want to be able to have a tight grasp on it. So Yeah. So we just saw the fucking uh the, the fucking assholes of this movie. The guys that end up fucking raping uh, the the fucking uh, main character. Uh but this movie uh fun fact, this has a lot in common with fucking uh uh Friday thirteenth part two. Mm. Because a lot of the fucking locations uh they shot at. Uh same Looks like it. Yeah, uh the diner that they uh go in later was in the movie. I think, uh, so yeah, was that the diner at the beginning of part two where the, they get towed and he starts chasing the guy, maybe? I read that. I, I, I didn't get a chance to watch both movies back to back. I'm not sure, but Mac of Mac and Zack Save the World fame shared us a meme that had Quasimodo from the Disney Hunchback with the Jason mask. And it was it was funny because he does look like... For part three, yeah. Oh, I guess it... Well, Quasimodo had hair. I guess you're right. I guess it was... I was thinking it was the part two, Jason. It was uh, part three when he show, uh, lifts his mask up and shows the one chick. And she goes, oh, you can't be alive. <laughs> it's pretty dog. Hey, speaking about all that getting ahead of the game with the content and stuff. Like I said, I'm not even going to pretend I know what day this is dropping. But as of the recording, two days ago, I finally recorded a new deep end. So Hell yeah, that's more than likely up right now. And that one, I had Josh James on with me, and that was a huge one. Uh, it's a big one. I hope it sounds okay, but I, you know, audio qual- quality wise, but it's a it's a really good episode, really good conversation, super super heavy topic too, and it was good to shift gears a little bit and do that. And after Zach, I didn't tell you about this. After we were done wrapping that, Josh James was feeling like on a roll, and he was like, "Hey man, uh, I know this is coming out of nowhere, and it's kind of late, but..." Would you be up to recording R rated? And I said, Well, first of all, I'd feel like a dick if he just recorded mine. And I'm like, No. And I said, Okay, well, you want me to see Josh James is a fucking genius. That's how he gets you. 
Well, he is. He did a good job. And I was like, okay, you want me to grab Zach? He's like, actually, I've never done one with just you. And I, I want to, ex- we should try that dynamic. And I'm like, I guess not. And so me and him just did a solo or just me and him together. We did that shitty bird shit box movie. Oh, you didn't like it? I, it was just kind of there. I mean, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was an amalgam of these other movies I've seen before, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it was, you could tell it was, Hey, some studio execs, like a quiet place did well. We were sitting on this script. To me, it seemed like a fucking zombie apocalypse movie done right, but without the shitty zombies, because I'm fucking tired of zombies at this point. It had elements of, like, The Walking Dead. That that, that stuff kind of reminded me of that with a small group and it being the... Oh, here's everybody's favorite retard. Yeah. I love this character. I would suck his dick. Oh, he, he kind of also looks like that Have You Dreamed of This Guy meme. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they, they don't know who that is. Yeah, there was a popular meme a couple of years ago where it's like, "Have you dreamed this man?" And uh, I heard it's a hoax now, but apparently it was this. Uh, oh yeah, a bunch of people described this same guy. Is he the real life Freddy Krueger? And he was just like this generic white fucking dude with like uh, balding hair and like uh, thick eyebrows and a doofy looking smile. And uh, yeah, this uh, we we should have a T-shirt for uh, Revival House that says, "Have you dreamed of this man?" We just put his face on it. He looks like Steve Burns from Blue's Clues. Uh, that guy's dark. Yeah. But uh, what was I saying before? Uh, the Bird Box movie. Yeah. You know, it was, I'll never watch it again. And I can't say that I gave it 100% attention, obviously. It was a movie I've never seen before. You know how it is when we were talking a lot. And I was just kind of watching it from the side. And I... I don't know. I hate Sandra Bullock, man. I'm just not a fan. Um, I don't think anything of her. She's just there. Yeah, not a not a big fan. She was Donk and Speed, though. That's a that's a corrupt mova. Yeah, but was Speed good or was she the one that made it good? I don't. Oh, everything about Speed's amazing. It's the greatest movie ever made. Fucking Dereves, bro. Like I was saying, I I tolerate her in something like Demolition Man because that movie was great and that was kind of before she was. Sandra Bullock. See, she's a great actress. See, you're just a fuck up. Uh, she's in all these great films and she probably makes them great. Oh, uh-uh, man, that was Sylvester Stallone's vehicle. He carried it. And by the way, I read an article today that uh, Sylvester Stallone still hopes to make his first screenplay he ever wrote because <laughs> he I guess he finished it. Maybe he didn't finish it back in the day, but he finished it. And he's like, who knows? Maybe I'll actually direct this and make it. But back before Rocky, he wrote a screenplay for a biopic on Edgar Allan Poe with the intentions of himself playing Edgar Allan Poe. And there's even a picture surfacing that surfaced online. He provided it and he shared it on Instagram, I think, of him in full costume. And he decided, I'm just not right for this role. Go figure. He doesn't look right for the role. But he would still like to make it. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Edgar Allan Poe is a fucking huge, uh, tidy Italian guy that fucked his cousin. That's Doc. Yo, Lenore, we did it. Yo, it's uh, it's Eggy Allen here. Uh, What's going on? Do I fight the raven? Uh, no, huh? No! You know, quote the raven, never more. <laughs> now we're seeing the bonding. They're donk. Uh, see, these are the guys you want to hang out with. Now, you know more about this stuff than me. Is this the original Rape Revenge movie, or is this just the one that popularized it? Um... It's not the original. Um, the, the, it's one of the most notorious. I think because of that fucking uh, the, the the title was great. The fucking uh, poster was great. By the way, let me read that. that. That's a fun fact. Let me read the tagline of this movie. Okay, this woman has just cut, chopped, broken, and burned five men beyond recognition, but no jury in America would ever convict her. Fucking uh, a hot chick standing there with a knife in her ass, uh, pointing at the camera. I spit on your grave. That's dark. But the fun fact is, uh, they just convicted a girl. For killing the person that kept her in sex slavery and sex traffic. Oh, they did? <laughs> so, yeah, this, that was a big story. So, she was going to court. She, she, I think she rescued herself. Obviously, got herself out of a bad situation. She was stuck in sex trafficking. And she actually rose above and killed her abuser and the person that was controlling the trafficking and, and di- distributing her, basically. Was it like a uh, thriller? They call her One Eye, where she, where he's uh, keeping her on heroin to control her and shit. 
but she they actually were trying her well, but actually you know what's funny is i think they did do her some justice it was a big there was a big outcry about it and i think the judge listened so she did get some kind of punishment but it wasn't it wasn't nearly as bad as it would be in a normal situation i'd have to look it up though but it's still kind of fucked up you know that she has to pay some kind of price that is weird you'd think that you'd think they would grant just leniency on her completely as like an isolated incident. But you know how the law works. It's like, well, we got to, we got to have some kind of thing set here. I mean, it's the law. The whole thing will tilt and ah, blah. If we treat you like, I don't know. It's stupid. Uh, it's not even really that. Like uh, you're, you're justified in defending yourself. Are you? <clears throat> I, yeah, there'd be a fuck boys. I think, I don't know. I, I can't, I don't remember her name. So it's going to be hard to actually look up the, the article, but uh, it was, I want to say she's doing some kind of very minimal time, minimal security, and she'll have like fucking parole for a while, yeah, or probation for a while, and the whole deal. I don't know, but it sucks. But yeah, well, I was I was leading up to uh, the, the, telling you the fun fact about that tagline. The fun fact is, uh, you know, uh, she never chops or burns anybody, and there's only four men and not five. So uh, they they lied on the fucking poster, but you know, it's a dang ass poster. <laughs> I was just trying to prove it wrong that no jury would convict her. I'm like, ah, hey, you know, they 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 do sometimes. <laughs> Uh, by the, that, that scene, uh, they were fucking hanging out, bonding and shit. And the fucking the retard shows up and he's like, "Hey, uh, she showed me her tits." And they're like, "Holy shit, she showed me her tits!" Uh, the, the, now they're fucking. They gotta go. Uh, they gotta go try to fucking uh, see her tits. Uh, uh, so it's it's all the retards' fault. See, uh, this movie, uh, fucking uh, putting the plight on the retards. See, uh, not enough people stand up for the retards. And she kills the retard. That's fun. Uh, that's kind of a spoiler. Uh, but will she kill? That's a, a big thing. People watch it for the first uh, time. Probably like, oh, will she kill the retard? Does he know what he did? Uh, he He's retarded. He don't know what he do, you know. Uh, but she does. She kills. She, she shows no sympathy. No moisy. She's donk. Ooh, I'm reading this other story, man. Last year, this, this woman named Centoya Cint- Brown. Sex tracking, sex tracking victim. She's young too. She must serve fifty-one years before release. Court says. Ooh, now there's got to be more to this story than the other one. This one says Brown, who was allegedly forced into prostitution, is serving a life prison sentence for killing a man she allegedly thought was going to shoot her. Hmm. Let me see here. This is interesting. Brown was 16 years old in 2004 when she killed real estate agent Johnny Allen, 43. At the time, Brown had run away from home. She wasn't even an adult. Why are you trying her as an adult? Uh, Let me see. Brown had run away from home and was living with her 24-year-old boyfriend, a pimp known as Cutthroat with a K. That's how I spell it. Cutthroat. Oh. He's gangster. He must be scary. He probably looks like Birdman, the rapper, uh, who raped her and forced her into prostitution. Uh, Let's see... So yeah, what do you think about uh, people trying uh, uh, kids as adults? What, what's the point of that? Like, why, why even have the rule if you're going to break it? It is interesting. It just shows that they handle certain things on a case by case. You know, I guess it depends on how much intent there was and how things were calculated. You know what I'm saying? Like if things were calculated to a point where it's like, well, a kid could not calculate that. Somebody who was very much an adult. And I think there's a level of heinousness where they, they kind of throw that out too. Uh, let me see. But uh, but a kid did calculate it, so you can't say that a kid can't. I want to. Let's see what this says. According to court documents, Allen solicited Brown for sex, then brought her back to his home and showed her his guns. Later in bed, Brown does that said, "Be the literal guns or his uh, muscles." <laughs> in the in the case of this article, it means literal weapons. Later in bed, I'm sure he showed her the other type though. Before though, uh, he doesn't have to impress her, man. He paid cash. You know, later in bed, Brown said she thought Alan was reaching for his gun to shoot her. So she grabbed a handgun from her purse and shot him first. Uh, oof. Let's see. Then Brown then removed money from Alan's wallet, took his gun and drove his truck to a Walmart. Uh, yeah, I probably should have done that. Probably yeah, this is, that. this looks a little sus. Yeah, this is not going in her favor. Um, uh, 
Brown was tried as an adult, convicted of first-degree murder, felony murder, and especially aggravated robbery, and was sentenced to life in prison for Allen's death in 2006. She was also diagnosed with fetal alcohol syndrome in 2012. Ugh. That's weird. Uh, uh, pedophiles don't even get sentenced to life in prison. And, and that's fucked up, too, man. I, so, I don't know if we told this story on the podcast, but somebody that... Did I tell you the story about the guy that Riverman and I went to high school with and middle school with and all that? I don't know. Okay. So, this kid that we went to school with, he was actually my best friend in the seventh grade. Then school got really complicated and they end up switching you to different teams and you you end up going whole years without seeing people and whatever, you you drift apart. But anyway, this was the nicest guy you'd ever meet. Even up until, I mean, I was visiting Riverman, I think all the way up until just seven, eight years ago, I'd see him. Every time I'd go to town where River lives, we'd go to a show or something. We'd always see him at the shows, the rock concerts and stuff. And he was always nice. We weren't really close anymore, but you know, I had him on social media. And if I saw him around at a gig when I visited, we'd always chat for a few and stuff. And he was nice, but super, super friendly guy. And the last person you'd, you'd suspect of anything horrible. He touches your kids. Well, baby toucher. So he's a diaper sniper. Listen, two years ago, it came out on the news that he was busted for uh, owning and distributing child pornography and all that stuff. And heinous. There's a whole bunch of charges that come with that. It's not just possession. It's also uh, contributing to the exploitation of a minor. You know, they tack that on there too. And distri- I don't know what distributing really entails. Sending it to people, probably. Well, well, if it if it's on a file sharing site, does that count? I mean, but it sounds like he was seriously trafficking and assisting. Because from what I understand, all those people are involved in a network where they do trade, like they're fucking baseball cards or something, you know. <sighs> but he had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of videos, images in the whole nine yards, man, and he was just part of this network. And they had had a local sting operation going on for a few years. And, you know, they cracked some of the biggest culprits, you know, with the the, the most traffic and stuff. And he was one of the guys that went down. Mm. And I, dude, looking at his mug shot, I ought to send it to you in a chat right now. He's just got to. You can make it the thumbnail of this episode. No. <laughs> I mean, he's got no <laughs> rights anymore. He's a prisoner. Yeah, we, we wouldn't do that. But no, you know, what's funny, though, is. You know how much, granted, he wasn't charged with actually physically touching any kid. But you know what? To me, it's it's just as bad because you are literally contributing to that, right? By by sharing those images and stuff like that, you're contributing to that horrible fucking breeding poisonous society. So even if you didn't actually touch anybody yourself, it doesn't mean that he didn't or he wouldn't have. But by him participating in the sharing of all that stuff, he's just fueling somebody else's desires that will eventually will touch a kid, right? Or do something horrible to a kid. It's all connected. But I'm going to send you a picture of him right now. But it's – I don't know. I, it kind of makes me want to be a photographer sometimes because I look at the looks in people's faces in the moments of certain – times in their lives and you just like man what is this person thinking you try and read their face look at this guy's mugshot he's got this he's got this look in his face of wow i fucked myself up for life yeah but it's it's so look at him because he really was the nicest guy in the world he was uh me and him we grew up playing guitar and stuff he actually got me into dire straits and we were both into certain rock bands but did you ever share his your guitar? Did he ever play your guitar? What if those same hands that touched your frets touched a child? He never did, but you know what? He, we were really big into Zelda too. I remember, I remember, I got Zelda Ocarina of Time right on the sixty four. I thought you meant Zelda too. That's dog. Zelda 2's dog. Well, no, Zelda Ocarina of Time, and he had already beaten it, and he was an uber fan. And I remember calling him on the phone. And him helping me get through the water temple. And he was just guiding me through it. He was just telling me off top of his head. And yeah, I remember I got fond memories of him helping me out with video games and shit. Let me find it though, because it's I want you to look at his face. And let's 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 try and decipher what it, what's going on here. Mm-hmm. 
So there was uh, th- that scene where the, that they they come by and, and check her out while she's uh, riding on the uh, the hammock. Uh, but there was uh, some uh, fucking uh, uh, you know feminist chick was writing about how all oh, this movie is uh, anti-feminist and like yeah that scene where they they come by on the boat you could tell uh, they're fucking uh, they got a raised made it's like a cock a phallic it's like no that's just how boats work. Uh, but uh, yeah, but now that same chick is like, actually, this is a, a feminist movie. It's, it's funny how they just kind of jump on like, oh, this is terrible. And then they watch it. They're like, oh, never mind. No, but, uh, yeah, the fun fact, this movie was made because the director, Mayor Zarki, he was, uh, d- driving through, uh, or actually he might have, uh, uh, something. He was, like, either driving through or walking through the park. And, uh, he sees this chick coming, uh, crawling out, and she, she basically just saw the aftermath of a rape. And, uh, he picked her up and tried to help her. Like, oh, uh, we gotta take you to the hospital. We gotta call the cops. Uh, but she, they called the cops first, and, uh, yeah, it was basically, uh, he uh, talked about, uh, he did a commentary too, I think, on the, uh, DVD and he was talking about like oh yeah the fucking uh, uh, the sheriff or whoever we talked to was pissing me off because like he, he kept asking her stupid questions uh, it's like we need to get her to the hospital he retard because uh, she was really hurt and shit but yeah that, he wrote this movie after that uh, just to show how fucked up it was uh, seeing that the aftermath of that interesting I sure hope the people that enjoyed our exploitation with the Jungle Cannibal movies also view this video because those videos did really well for us for some reason. They were the... Yeah. They gave us a nice spot. And they're still moving, too. I mean, especially... Well, they're both doing well, but the... Uh, fuck, the... The, yeah. the, first, the first one, you know, it's, it's still doing like, uh, you know... It's doing good. I don't know. It's pretty cool. So basically, you guys are some sleazy motherfuckers. We appreciate it. So hopefully, yeah. same audience here. Hey, I just sent you the link of him being convicted, man. Look at the look on his face. Zoom in on it. Uh, I won't dox him. I won't say it, even though he's kind of a scumbag. You guys can look it up if you want. But but look at just look at the look on his face. It's It looks like they dragged him out of bed in the middle of the night and his head's spinning still. You know, that he actually got caught, right? Because you got to imagine if you're a normally well-to-do person with a regular life and you have this secret, you know, you go home at night and you have the secret, you probably start feeling pretty confident and kind of almost pretend like you're not doing anything wrong, you know? Like, I'll never get caught. You know, I'm this this quote-unquote good guy 99% of the time. This is just 1% of my life. And it looks like... Was that his real name? Yeah, that's his real name. Doesn't it sound like... Sounds like a stage name. Sounds metal as fuck. And he was in metal bands. He, he was big on the local scene. He was in a band. He was in a band right when this happened. And it's so funny. Uh, the band he joined was big in the local scene. I mean, they're never going anywhere because they've never gotten past that, right? In like fucking mm. 10 years, 15 years. But anyway, they scrubbed him from all their websites and shit. It was mm. obviously naturally what you do. But doesn't he have that look in his face? Like, I just got yanked out of bed, and I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I do know I fucked my life up. I'm kind of giving a half smirk. I don't know. I don't really see that. He just looks like he he's uh, posing for a driver's license photo to me. <laughs> I, but I'm saying it looks like it's all happening very fast for him, you know? Yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, <laughs> but he's got his eyes are almost watery, like, oh, I'm a fuck. He doesn't know if he should smile. He doesn't know if he should look phased, but he, he clearly is. And if you notice, he only got 60 months why not just call it five years? I don't get it. Why they make it just do math? <sighs> he got 60 months or five years in prison, and then he'll have five years of supervised release when he gets out. And, uh, of course, he'll have to register as a sex offender. Does does five years seem like enough to you, man? I mean, I get it. He wasn't convicted of, like I said, physically touching anybody, but I think... Was he involved in taking the pictures? I think that charge would be stated if he was. You know, I think that would probably be a different... Uh, let me see... Because that would probably be producing, right? Producing it. Yeah. And I don't think, because that would be very f- horrible. But this isn't too much different than me to, to me, right? I, uh, you're still yeah. feeding into the the whole circle of all that shit going. All you're doing is supporting somebody that is taking the pictures. That's all you're doing. Yeah. And then you're just supporting the people's appetites who want to go kidnap a kid or abuse a kid and do that stuff. And God knows they're not just stopping at taking pictures. They're actually doing shit to those kids. Uh 
So it's it's fucking horrible. But anyway, five years, and yet we have certain crimes. Don't we have people that are still fucking rotting in prison from old marijuana charges <laughs> like 20 years ago? Uh, it just blows me away. We have a fucking just dipped our toe in the beginning of the longest fucking, uh, one of the longest fucking rape scenes ever filmed. Uh, 25 minutes long, roughly. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, see, uh, people talk about, like, uh, apparently, uh, Ebert Roper were like, oh, this movie's fucking terrible. It, it puts you in the fucking mindset of the men. Uh, it's told from their perspective. And you're supposed to be, uh, fucking egging them on it. It's like, what the fuck movie did you watch? Yeah, no, I mean, it totally turns around and it's, it's her fucking movie. Yeah. <sighs> Like, yeah, she, like, with the exception of, like, two scenes, you're always seeing her on screen. So how would it be told through their point of view? Those guys didn't know movies. I mean, their their opinion was always so far up their ass. Yeah, they're full of shit. Here's a fun fact. Do you ever uh, look up uh, fucking, uh, what's his name? The one that, that got the jaw cancer? <laughs> That's uh, Ebert, yeah. Yeah, Ebert. You ever look up his original fucking review of Alien? Ooh, no. Is it going to make me mad? I love that movie. You can't find it because he scrubbed it from the fucking internet. He shat on that movie. Uh, the only way you can find that is if you, you go to, like, the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, if you find, like, uh, a library where they archive all their uh, old uh, fucking newspapers. Because he shat all over that movie. But why scrub it? Why not at least just stand by what you said back then and have maybe an updated review of it? Yeah, he re-reviewed it in 2001 or something, and that's the only one you can find. That's ridiculous. And he doesn't even acknowledge the old one. He just fucking acts like that's the first time he's talking about it. And was the 2001 one more favorable, or was it just fair? It feels more favorable, yeah. Just own up to it. Be like, yeah, so I'm going to update it. This is a companion piece to my original one. There's lots of movies that you feel age better with time, or you you weren't quite drinking the Kool-Aid at first. I mean, there's... There's stuff I've watched where I feel that way, you know, or mm-hmm. I, so I don't understand. Do you, ha- did you read it by chance? The original? No, I couldn't find it either. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody kind of talks about it and I've heard yeah. quotes he, from it. He's probably like, this movie's too boring. There's not enough talking. You know, it's just a lot of quietness and it's in space. You never see the monster. And when you do, it looks like a giant skinny black man in a costume. I found out it was. You don't care about any of the characters. Yeah, these these effects suck. These effects are terrible, and some bozo decided to make the main protagonist a woman, of all things. <laughs> and then they show her, and then it's uh, it's sexist because they show her with a underwear on at once. And worst of all, she has no ass. If you're going to put a woman in a movie, she should be regulated to bit player. Uh, she should be doing some kind of lovemaking. Like a Bond girl. That'd be funny if, if those two things were right next to each other. It's sexist, but uh, she didn't have an ass either. I'm just trying to tap into an old school mentality of the late <laughs> 70s. Like, uh, it's E. Roger Ebert, you know. I, it's crazy. It was trailblazing, though. It's like you have this movie like that that had a budget behind it, and the main person was a chick. It was a big deal. <sighs> so maybe he just wasn't ready. Maybe he wasn't as forward thinking as the, the creators were. I don't know. I think Alien is a flawless movie. Mm. Uh, you guys were talking about on the R-rated horror Shining podcast you did. You think The Shining is as close to a perfect movie as you can get, right? Mm. I would say that as well. I think Alien is one of those flicks too. Mm-hmm. I can't find anything wrong with it. And it nails what every other movie fails to do usually where it's the support characters. You, you like all of them. They all have character and identity and you know, and they could never really emulate it in later movies either, but it's it's great. So, fuck uh, Ebert. May he rest in peace. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at him. He's just gloating, playing the harmonica like he ain't got a care in the world. It's just Tuesday to him. You know, yeah. He's relaxing. These are, these are fuck boys. Look at him. He worked up an appetite. Was he just eating like some acorns or something? What was he doing? He's being a fuck boy. I think he's the one that writes her down. You think uh, he would be he'd like go last because he's like the leader. Why are they taking their sweet time? Do you really think a gang rape would happen like this? I'm pretty sure they'd all just kind of take their turns, and you know, it'd be a lot like the accused, Jodie Foster. Yeah, it seems like they're almost uh, fucking uh, giving themselves uh, almost like uh, they weren't even all planning on do it, but then they just kind of like got in the moment and like, okay, I'll do it too. 
uh, it's, uh, I think the movie's playing with your uh, perception or expectation. Like, oh, it's over. And then uh, it's uh, far from over. And uh, they're just giving them all these very sinister looks. It's super premeditated. Look at that. They're all, look, and she's even taunting her with the harmonica. And they're all kind of walking towards her creepily. Like, they're, you'd think out of a group of friends this big, there would be more than just the one that's mentally handicapped that would have some sort of restraint or, oh man, maybe we shouldn't do this or at least not look like they're totally just evil incarnate enjoying it to this. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. they Like if we weren't talking over, they were talking about like, oh, she, uh, they're, she's tempting us really. Well, we're just giving her what she wants. Uh, it's, that's horrible. Like, yeah. Did you, did you not see how she was set on that hammock? She's, she's walking around all naked and bloody, man. I mean, it's, yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, dude, this is this is hard to watch. To mm. me, I don't know. This is definitely worse than the rape scene in something like Cannibal Holocaust, <laughs> which is obviously a lot uh, smaller and shorter. Like this is brutal. It's blowing my mind how much he looks like that fucking meme, the retard. I like how I call him the retard. That's uh, not politically correct. He's kind of got uh, a Burt Reynolds deliverance vibe, too, with his haircut, the guy on the left. Yeah. Or he's he's balding on top, but he's not willing to let it go because he's still growing it out in the sides. He just needs to get a grip and shave it. Get a grip. Just get a grip. You know who finally shaved his head, man? I was... Uh, Looking on Instagram, John Travolta, he's like, thanks for liking the new do. I'm like, you finally got rid of all that ridiculous, like, hair pieces and shit you were wearing? Yeah. Uh, I'll probably be back. We got to watch that Fred Durst movie, man. That Fred Durst joint with Devin Sawa. Devin Sawa, which reminds me, uh, I think uh, we still got quite a bit of uh, fucking uh, requests to do that I already got in the box. I think we should fit, uh, do some more uh, fucking Sawa exploitation with uh, fucking, uh, you know, Final Destination 1, baby. Yeah, we could do the Final Destination 1. What else was the end of note? Casper, we never did that. What's funny oh, is Casper. he did an interview recently where somebody was talking about Eminem and him being in the stand video and stuff. And, and he was talking about, uh, do you get approached by fans, you know, from the nineties and shit? And, and he's like, yeah, he's like, you know what? People quote me all the time. Like what they asked him, what do you hear more than anything? I hear, can I keep you all the time? He's like, which is kind of <laughs> fucked up because I was in that movie for two seconds. <laughs> I didn't play Casper during the movie, his voice. I just showed yeah. up at the very fucking end. And I said, can I keep you? And I told you I was a good dancer. And that was it. And everybody's, and, and that's what people, I, that's my most popular movie. A movie I really wasn't in. Did we ever do Little Giants? Did we do that a long ass time ago? We never did. We never did it, really? Never. Well, that's that's my pick for next Devin Sawa then, because I like that movie a lot. We should do that. The Sawa exploitation. And it's got Ed O'Neill, so it's kind of a double header. And you know what? Devin Sawa, he might be the guy that uh, fucking uh, listens to the podcast if we tweeted at him. So uh, I got to make sure I talk extra about sucking his cock, and, uh, but his semen is sour. We could probably get him on a podcast. <laughs> we probably could. I mean, he. I, I think we could definitely get him on to promote like that new shitty Fred Durst movie or whatever. But I don't know. I, How you know shitty? It could be the basic movie. Uh, you know what? That Life on the Line movie, he was also in with John Travolta. I told you guys I watched that just on a whim one night. It wasn't the worst thing in the world. It really wasn't. I actually sat through it. Would you risk Life in the Lip to see that movie? Life in the Line, you mean? Uh, yeah, my bad. No, because I can probably get it pretty easily because it's a Fred Durst joint. <laughs> no, you know what, though? Uh, I don't know. I've I've toyed with the idea of getting guests on for commentaries but i don't know I, I i wonder if that would take away the fun spirit like would you for example zach if we had someone like sawa on if they agreed to do a commentary would that make us lay down and act differently because we had somebody that was kind of an outsider on the show you know what i mean yeah i don't know so and i don't know if i want to be that uptight i don't want to be that like tight-assed and shake the foundation i mean it would definitely be more informative it's so funny. I'm not going to say it because he didn't actually announce it. I don't even know if it's going to happen. But uh, 
never mind. I'll tell you after the podcast. But right. let's just say I've kicked around these ideas before. And I'm like, you know, I just don't. We can totally do it. I just don't know if it would. I think it might wreck. See, I think it would be that'd be the hardest thing to get them to agree to do is to watch the movie because uh, usually they're like, "Oh, a time crunch. Uh, yeah, I'll give you an interview for like twenty minutes." Uh, no, we want to watch the movie with you. So I already got the fucking movie, kid. What's funny is, let's say they could hang out. It's not that hard. Certain actors will give you an hour and a half. You know, if they're especially if they're genre guys, <sighs> in, in their smaller time, of course. Uh, it, and then we'll have to ask him, like, hey, uh, Devin Sawa, can you download Audacity and record your side of the phone call and send it to us? No. So we would obviously <laughs> we would obviously have to not do that unless they're super cool. Uh, sometimes those guys legit use Skype. If they're at home, a lot of them will do that anyway. But, you know, if they, they call on a phone, they call on a phone. But uh, what's funny is it actually works for our podcast because they don't have to watch the movie with us. Uh-huh. Because it are we're kind of just a podcast format. We could literally be watching the movie, and we could be driving the conversation and just be talking to them. We don't even necessarily have to. It'd be great if they were watching it too. Uh-huh. Can you imagine if we had Devin Sawa on? And he's like, "Oh shit, I think you guys are five seconds ahead of me now. Can we stop <laughs> doing that resyncing shit?" Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just not go with it, Devin Sawa. Well, we'd have to call him Devin Sawa every time. We but a, but another day. idea would be, let's say. We had an we had an opportunity, and we only did get like 15, 20 minutes with somebody. Well, what we could do is we could do like a pre podcast and put it on the front of of the commentary we're doing that's honoring the person we had on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we could sort of do a little interview, and we could ask them about the movie that we were gonna record later. Yeah. So there's things that we could do, and who knows? Maybe that. Maybe I just hit it on the head. Maybe that's how we blend the two, right? Uh-huh. That way we can still say the off-color shit we say during the actual broadcast presentation, right? The real, the meat. And, but we have something. I don't know. I just don't know how to attack it yet. And another thing, too, is I don't want to do something and then stop doing it. It wants to, If we can do it, I want it to be something we can do consistently. And it, we need to figure it out. So, uh-huh. But who knows? We'll see. Like, we could get someone like Camille Keaton, right? Well, she's kind of old. I don't know if she's she'd be like on the phone. She's currently doing the fucking official sequel to this movie. Really? Maris Harkey is making a uh, fucking... Originally, it was just going to be called Deja Vu. And it was going to be basically, uh, from what I'm seeing... Her in a therapist office reliving the memories? I don't know. Basically, from what I was seeing, it was going to be a sequel, a direct sequel to this one, and serve as a sequel to the remake uh, series, too. Uh, for now, uh, I'm, th- I'm seeing no, it's going to be a sequel to the, the original, and it's the original director and writer and uh, original actress. So it, the plot has to differ a lot, then, because she's much older. I mean, and the pe- the victims are dead, obviously. Or, sorry, or the, the people that attacked her are, are dead. Yeah, if I had to get, I could look up the plot right now. I'm sure maybe it, like her daughter or something. Yeah, what's the angle, man? Look it up. That's interesting. I wonder how they'd uh, approach that. I'll look it up. See, you thought it was all fucking over, and it, the movie just drags it on. It's relentless. It don't give no fucks. I think this is where the retard uh, does it. And then he, he goes, I can't come. I can't come. Oh, is he not the last one? Is he the last one to do it? Um, I thought he would be. I don't even think uh, he's the last one. I think... Uh, uh, maybe, yeah. But. That's actually the hardest one to watch because he's the only one that's showing a little bit of restraint and, oh, this, you know, like this can't be right. I get it. He's not always in his right mind. But the fact that he actually goes through with it. Well, he's a retard. You could just get him to do whatever you want. Well, he's kind of influenced where you could tell there's. That was terrible. See, I was going to go into a joke about how, like, yeah, when I was a kid I at school, I used to make all the retards get all my shit for me to carry my books. Uh, see, that's too mean-spirited of Zach to even go there. The the fucking podcast, Zach can't do that. You know what? I just did, though, so it's okay. But you know what I mean? I think the, the goal of his character, the aim for his character is he's kind of in the middle, right? He is easily influenced. He would never want to do that. You can kind of see he feels a little bit of sympathy. But at the same time, he also wants to impress the people he's with. I, I don't know. Look, and all it took was a little bit of liquid courage, and he started looking at her with fucking the devil's eyes. You see that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm seeing it. Uh, 
Let me see here. Written directed by Creator Original. Treat to the vast loyal fan base. Uh, I spent on your grave. Deja vu. Picks up with Jennifer Hills, Camille Keaton as a best-selling author of a book that recounts her rape ordeal and the controversial trial in which she was uh, acquitted of mercilessly killing uh, four assailants. Jennifer Hills is now living in New York City with her famous supermodel daughter. Hey, I, I calls it. I caused it. Played by Jamie Bernadette. Uh, both are kidnapped and taken to a remote rural town by the revenge-seeking relatives of the four rapists. Okay. Hmm. So it looks like it's called I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu. I, I kind of dislike Deja Vu. I Spit on Your Grave is a great title, though, so they probably want to put that on there. Interesting. Oh, man, this one's the hardest to watch. And another fun fact. Oh, yeah, this is... Uh, mm. yeah, see, have you dreamed this man? That, yeah, right there. Oh, <laughs> I can't come. That's horrible. His dirty ass socks, man. He leaves his socks on. What a sleazeball. Yeah, he's just telling him, take off your dirty ass socks, Matthew. This isn't weird at all that we're raping a chick. Oh, stomping his ass down in further. Golly, man. I can't come. I can't come. You're entering up. You're interrupting my coitus. I can't cap. Uh, see, that's got to be a sound draw for episodes. Uh, a hot chick shows her tits, and I'll, I'll play that. I can't cap. That's uh, that's probably like I said. I know you said that uh, you you don't like not coming up with the idea yourself, but you know that close up of him. I can't come is is doesn't scream thumbnail. Uh, it's got to be. I have you dreamed this man too? Oh, uh, <laughs> will anybody get that? You could probably put it next to him. I don't know. Yeah, that's dog. So much to play with. Yeah, man. Like the fact that these guys don't even at least have remorse after the effect. You you'd think when it comes to stuff like sex, well, we we're not supposed to fucking feel bad for her when she gets revenge. I get it. I get it. Well, no, from the filmmaker standpoint, it makes total sense. But you know, regular guys, you'd have to imagine that just normal circumstances of sex people regret what they just did after fucking blowing their load, right? It just it just regular, standard, whatever. These guys, after they released whatever it is they were going to release, you don't think they'd be like, oh, fuck. Oh, no. man. Uh, they're, f- they're all fucking uh, sadistic uh, sociopaths. They really are. They, we, we, the movie got lucky, or she got really unlucky, rather, and just fucking stumbling upon the gas station that hired uh, fucking, psych- fucking psychopaths only. Like, you must be a psychopath to have this job. That's what I'm saying. The the types of guys these are and the fact that they're all together in a little clique is kind of defying some odds. What do you think of the remake of this movie? Uh, one of the better remakes. I enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, I think the fact that it came out straight to Blu-ray and it wasn't in theaters and didn't have all this fucking big money thrown at it kind of worked in its favor because it needed to be like kind of a... A low-budget, grittier type of movie. Well, I'm sure they attempted to get it in theaters. You know, I'm sure they just couldn't get the... Yeah, the distribution and shit would have been too much money. Uh, See, I don't even think they fucking bothered getting the movie rated. I think they let it come out unrated. Because it wasn't going to theaters. I also like the sequel to it. See, I I thought the second one was... uh, I don't know. Maybe I wasn't in the right mood when I watched the second one. I thought it was just kind of too much. Like, oh, what a same old. But uh, I thought the third one... uh, The third one is uh, arguably the worst of the series. But I fucking enjoyed it because it was so over the top. I didn't even know there was a third one of the remakes. The third one scene. Yeah, there's a scene where she bites off a guy's cock. And it's it's, it's amazing. Isn't part two the one where it's a shotgun blast out of me? I think that's the, the the first remake. Is that the first remake? Okay. Yeah. I remember I liked that a lot. The only uh, thing that I did like about the remake was uh, fucking uh, how she came up with these weird, elaborate fucking... It's like uh, she's MacGyver all of a sudden. Yeah. Macaulay Culkin. Making a fucking, uh, you know, torture device out of uh, a fucking needle and thread, uh, a stick of gum or something. She watched a lot of First Blood, man. Yeah. Booby traps in the woods. Look at this. Look at this fucking asshole. Smacking her. See, who could watch this and think, oh yeah, it's 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 putting us on the side of the men. Yeah, I know. He's a he's a dunce, man. R.I.P. A fucking retard. 
See, he's just mad that they fucking made the retards look bad in this movie, I think. He's like, oh, they're fucking uh, attacking me now. He, he was obviously just a self-loather. I mean, this is the guy that wrote Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Yeah, I've never seen that. I heard it's uh, actually fucking pretty entertaining. Really? Okay. Yeah, I've heard it's kind of sleazy, which is funny that he Coming from it. him? Yeah. A guy that notoriously <laughs> shit-bagged on sleazy movies? <laughs> Craziness. Well, it's different what I do. I don't mean anything, but I'm just, uh, it's the fucking characters. Yeah, I got you, man. I feel you. See, uh, this, this is a, g- a great fucking uh, question uh, Joe Bob brings up here. Why would they trust the retarded guy to go in there and kill her? Okay, so yeah, they obviously want to pin it on him. Yeah, that's the only reason. But uh, as as if they would still get away with it, they the judge would st- the jury they'd all be like, well, he's clearly handicapped, and you guys clearly put him up to it. So we're still gonna fucking throw the books at you guys too. This might even be before like uh, DNA was really a thing, so they could uh, probably could have just said, uh, "Yeah, as long as uh, he kills her, uh, she's she's not gonna have any side of the story. We'll just say he did it all. Yeah, and we never did anything." And they could have turned his back on him. Yeah, and just be like, "Hey, yeah, it was all him." And what is he gonna say? Is he gonna stand up for himself? Probably not. Uh, they probably uh, are dumb and thought, "Oh, they won't even convict him because uh, he's he's not all mentally there, man. They'll go easy on him." I gotcha. That's kind of. But it's still stupid because it's like uh, uh, she's not going to kill her. He uh, he had fucking uh, uh, he's the one that uh, told them about her, and obviously he's got some kind of crush on her. That's the kind of uh, oh wait, he still got a crush on her after he got that piece though. So I mean, him he must be the real deal. Most guys would be over it, but uh, even if even if he did try uh, to kill her, uh, it's possible he could have fucked up. So their approach. Of him being mentally challenged and him maybe getting off or not getting it so hard is kind of the same theory with the making a murder thing, right? So is it the uh. the stepdad and the cousin or whatever it is that they're on, on the defense that they think that maybe they really did it? The argument is, well, they would have thought that Brendan Dassey would have – they would have gone easy on him because he's mentally challenged or something. And it very well just kind of got way in over their heads with it. And I don't know. Yeah. You know, the second season of Making a Burger reminded me a lot of Paradise Lost 2. Because, mm. uh, like, in that documentary, uh, they, they basically say, uh, basically, they're convinced fucking, uh, uh, what was the other, what was the fucking crazy ass stepdad's day? The one that, the one that was shooting in the first one. You guys boy, ate my boy's testicles. Yeah. That guy must have got medicated between two and three because uh, out, out of nowhere in three, he's like, he's on their side and wants to find the real killer. But in part two, he's uh, fucking, yeah, it was looking like he might have had something to do with it. Wasn't he the number one suspect? And isn't he still, you know? On part two, no, he's completely exonerated now. It's the other dad, uh, the one that, ah, uh, oh, man, uh, I forget his last name. Was Bauer the, the crazy one? That was like the church singer and stuff. Uh, it's the other guy, uh, Ta- Cobbs or something, something like that. I watched this bio. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a biopic. It was an actual movie about the West Memphis Three, and I don't even remember who was in it. It was, it was just whatever. I don't even remember who was in it. It was just okay. The documentaries are way better. Oh yeah, the devil's not. That was uh, forgettable. Who was in that? Remind me. Who was the star? Um, was Kirsten Dunst in that? Or someone like that? I don't think so. I'm going to look it up because it's driving me crazy, and then I'll say what I was going to say. It was very forgettable. Very forgettable. The Devil's Not. It had... West of Memphis, I think, is my favorite documentary. The one that uh, Peter Jackson did. Had Reese Witherspoon and Colin Firth. Okay. Yeah, so... No, so... The two guys that made the Paradise Lost documentaries, obviously one of them has since passed... Uh, there's Joel Sanofsky, or how, I might be saying these names wrong. I've never understood Joel Sanofsky, and there's Joe Berlinger, right? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, so the Joe guy, he's still alive, and he's directing the upcoming. They're both names, uh, Joe. You said Joel. I, mean, I said Joel. Oh, okay. I think it's Joe and Joel. I think. All right. But uh, anyway. The Joe, he's still alive, and he's directing. He directed the upcoming Zac Efron Ted Bundy movie. Oh yeah, biopic, whatever. Which, which I think is hitting the film festivals and shit. It's getting premiered like in the next week or two. So 
and it fucking Zach Efron's a dead ringer. If you're gonna, if you want to get somebody that's marketable in Hollywood and you want to make it a Hollywood movie that's gonna make money, you can't really do much worse than Zach Efron if you're going for looks because he taps into it in the screenshots I've seen. Anyway, the same filmmaker, like I said, he did Paradise Lost. Uh, this Thursday, well, if you guys are listening to this, it's already on Netflix. They're dropping, I'm guessing to help promote the upcoming biopic, uh, a Netflix docu-series, the Ted Bundy tapes directed by Joe, Joe Berlin, whatever his name is. Berlinger. Berlinger. Uh, you know what his other movie was? Uh, the one that he fucking disowns. Yeah, uh, fucking your favorite. Blair Witch 2. Favorite. A dog ass fell, but I want to see his director's cut. Yeah, I'm sure he would. He also directed some kind of monster. Some stock to my ears. Yeah. <laughs> we were there was one point where we were getting uh, fucking so close to do the commentary of that. I still would love to. <laughs> well, if you call it regular. <laughs> what he's like. Uh it's it's a good anyway, he's a good documentarian. He makes really good documentaries and even some kind of monster. Like you don't you don't have to really be into that kind of music or that band or whatever to kind of enjoy it and take something from it. It's not, it's not paradise lost was that movie was riveting. Right. Mm -hmm. But nobody that, that documentary put paradise lost the actual case in the West Memphis three on the map. It's really funny if you go back and watch that. They really, uh, they completely just let the fucking, uh, you know, prosecutors completely have the narrative. Uh, they never fucking uh, push back on anything. Uh, but yeah, we found a, a fucking uh, human. What was it they said? They, they found a human eye in a jar underneath Damien's fucking Echo's bed or something like that. What the fuck? Yeah, they, they, they fucking threw that out there at one point. Uh, and he, his, his response was like, he just laughed and said, you didn't fucking find that in my, under my bed. And uh, we, we we never got like uh, none of the stuff that was brought up. And, like that started with part two. Is when like, oh yeah, this is the satanic panic shit, you know, run amok. So, uh, with that said, do you think it was biased to the point that you think the West Memphis Three could have done it? Um, no, I don't. Okay, I, it's just kind of one of those things where they just did give you uh, enough of the other side. Yeah, because I watched it again recently. I, Maybe they didn't know back then, as it normally does. Is that still on Netflix? It was for the longest time. It's on Prime or Prime rather. Okay. Didn't they do a third one too, or were they were gonna do a third one? Yeah, they did. Uh, fucking uh, the third one came out like just before the Alfred plea happened. Okay, so that's why uh, I kind of say uh, West of Memphis is the best one to watch because that one came out after that. So you had the full fucking story conclusion. Was it the same filmmaker and everything? I think it was a different one for that one. Okay, West of Memphis. Peter Jackson produced that one. Yeah, I didn't even know the West of Memphis even existed, so I'm going to bookmark that right now because I'm, I'm all about it. I follow Damien Eccles on social media and shit. It's funny how the other two kids, they just want to live a quiet life. They live in small towns. And they're just, they just want to basically live a normal life like their parents did. But Damien Eccles, he moved to New York City, book deals. He dresses a certain way and he goes to art galleries. He's just... I don't know. He he really turned a bad situation into a positive for him, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, fun fact, that scar on her face is real. Um, she's had it since she was a kid, I guess. And uh, they did put they put makeup to kind of uh, make it stand out more. Interesting. I've seen her I, at cons and I've never I guess I never looked up close enough to notice it. Yeah, it's probably really faint now. She looks like the Joker got to her. Yeah, but yeah, they never fucking, uh, one of the biggest things about like all the evidence, oh, look how they fucking mutilated their bodies and it's never even brought up that, oh, that could have happened after they were dead. Uh, fucking wolves could have chewed on, you know, uh, their, their, uh, you know, skin and shit. That's never even brought up till part two. Well, they have no way, even, even in the early nineties or whatever, they had no way of determining that mutilation was caused by teeth and fangs and wolves. Uh, yeah, it, 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 like it probably happened so fast that like not it, they probably just didn't fucking they probably had like not so good lawyers that didn't want that didn't fucking ask for all these tests or didn't have enough money or so they were fucking poor kids so they were probably like free uh, lawyers uh, fucking uh -huh. you know 
Well, I doubt there's a huge wealthy population in, in West Memphis. Yeah. You know, Arkansas. I mean, that place is a toilet. So I wonder if it was another situation where they had to sit there and, and have somebody for the books and to, to have somebody go down for it because, you know, they say within the first 48 hours, if you don't have a lead or you don't have anybody at least in custody, chances are, I mean, you're not going to find anybody and it dwindles past that point. Yeah, you think we'll ever find out who really killed those kids? They found the BTK killer. <laughs> That's yeah, something tells me we won't. Like, it's been too long. It, uh, if we do, it'll be because uh, fucking somebody gives a deathbed confession or something. Ooh, that'd be nuts. Yeah. And then would you be able to take the deathbed confession seriously? Yeah, what if it's just somebody that wants to fucking be remembered or something stupid? And it's like, well, you know, I won't actually have to pay for this. I'm dying. I don't really care. Maybe I don't believe in an afterlife. I will i don't give a fuck what anybody thinks of it about me afterwards. If I, you know, quote unquote, did these crimes, I'll just say it. Oh. I don't think anybody would do that. Like, you think anybody would care about fame that much? Let's say I get it. If you have no conscience, you really think that there's no afterlife and you don't really care about what people are going to say when you're gone or any kind of legacy. And you're like, I touch those kids Ugh. there are people that think the only fucking real meaning of life is to just leave your mark whatever it may be so like yeah like oh if people remember my name uh, badly it's still good yeah i don't know about that not for me i get it but yeah in that for in that original documentary there's even a part where damien says uh uh he says something he, he's a fucking uh total fucking edgelord kid and he says something like uh yeah if anything uh you know uh the kids will be uh asking their parents like uh they'll be afraid to go to sleep like oh what if damien's under my bed uh, i'll be like the the, the boogie bed or something he says something like that he was almost embracing it when he had nothing else yeah uh, he said something like that i forgot what it was like it's something. I don't know. And then in uh, part two, he, he, like, uh, it starts out with him saying, like, yeah, I was stupid for saying that. I was a fucking edgelord. Cringe lord. Makes sense. I mean, he was the one that had the strong head out of the group in prison. He was always really collected about it. And uh, I don't know. That, that thick Arkansas accent they all had, man, and he had, too. <clears throat> fucking mm -hmm. weird. It's very non donk, if you ask me, right? It's non donk. Non donk. He needs to go to speech therapy and get that fucking fixed. I think he got his teeth fixed. He had some weird teeth, I think. Oh yeah. He's Mr. Moneybags now. Yeah, I, I, I got his book. He wrote like a book in the prison. I haven't read it. I got one right at like the one that came out like a couple months after he came out or got released. And I still haven't gotten around to get like uh, that's around the time I got a Kindle, and then I was like, oh, I just want to read shit on my Kindle because I, I I can read it at nighttime. Mm -hmm. So uh, I kind of like I that, that's what sucks about uh, uh like I got those Joe Bob books, and I can only read them during the day, which didn't come out on Kindle. So what's the Damien Eccles book called? Because I have, like I said, I've got the. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Audible thing where I'm getting the credit per month. Oh yeah. So I've got a couple of credits built up, and I'm sure we can also. Yeah, I, I remember too. We can also like uh, I can let you borrow ones I have too. They do that. Oh really? Yeah. How does that work? Is it timed? I don't know. Yeah. Or does it just mean you don't have it while I have it, and they don't give a fuck how long I have it as long as it's like a real book? You could just get pissed at me if I decide not to get back. Oh yeah. Maybe. I, I, like, I do got that Stephen Weber uh, It audiobook. I, I've had that for years. Oh, The Shining? Or no, It? Yeah, It. And uh, I want to say I might have The Shining, too. Which? And, and, and I just got the Pet Cemetery one because it's been so long since I read that that I don't remember anything about it. I'm guessing the book I want to bookmark here is Life After Death by him. Yeah, that's the one I got. Because other than that, I'm finding a lot of magic books. Yeah, after that, he did that stuff. A Course in High Magic, yeah. So, I mean... Wiccan. Uh, Wiccan good. Do you think he's friends with Sully Erna from Godsmack, who's also a Wiccan? I don't know. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. That reminds me, like, uh, I, I watched the Sabrina show. Oh, yeah? I didn't. 
And uh, yeah, people, uh, I, I, uh, like I, I got through it. I was like, you know what? It's just uh, whatever. I was hoping it would like fill the void that fucking Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, when it ended. Uh, like I liked that show. Uh, you could call me core. Uh, I embrace my inner core. But yeah, I was like, oh, I hope it's like Buffy. Uh, it, it didn't reach that level. But then afterwards, I was like, I wonder what people were thinking about it. There was a lot of people bitching about, like, uh, uh, the, they fucking, uh, they're talking about Wicked, uh, they're painting all Wiccans bad. Uh, there are good witches. And I was like, oh, people believe in witches. That's dog. <laughs> I I don't know if I want to get this audiobook, man, because it says here on the front, read by author, and I already told you how I feel about his weird accent, his drawl, mm. kind of grating. But I put it in the wish list anyway. Hey, what's so what's the Joe Bob book? So I'm going to look them up. Ah, uh, but Joe Bob goes to the drive-in. It's the first one. Ooh, I don't see it on here. I don't think it's... Yeah, it's not... They're out of print. Like, if you want to get the paper versions even. So, yeah. Maybe uh, that can... Maybe... Yeah, I don't know. There's no... There's none, like, electronic versions either for Kindle. Is there anything that you would recommend I, I p- possibly play with the notion of getting as far as it, that would be a good audiobook too. Maybe it maybe just the book itself, but also who reads it entertaining. Is there something you recommend? Um, most of the ones I get are just like a bunch of like nonfiction ones. Uh, like I got the better angels of our nature. You ever hear of that book? No, I'm looking it up now about like crime uh, about how oh yeah it's fucking uh crazy but like oh we're we're living in the most peaceful time in uh in uh the history of the world mm. like i got that one I'm looking uh, at it now is it really is it really not boring i like it okay i liked it it's fucking uh, a lot of fucking information in there okay it's like a phone book that's that's what i'm scared of i don't want something i have to fucking yeah, really have to absorb. This is the kind of because when it comes to these, man, I'm probably going to listen to them on commutes and drives and pieces, and it's probably not going to be every day. I don't, I don't want it to be something like that where I'm going to fucking forget all these little things. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of horror books I never read, so I don't know if there's any like good stories. It's tempting to to listen to The Shining, but I never. I don't know if I don't know if the shining the book is really going to be better than the movie because they're just they seem like different animals. Yeah, I think I want to say I have the audiobook of the shining. I was thinking about getting Dr. Sleep. Yeah, I have that in my queue too, my wish list. But I heard what that one's about and it doesn't sound like besides the connection of Danny. Yeah, that's the only reason I would even check it out is because it's But it it sounds like other than that, that's where the fucking comparisons and the connection stop. Yeah, it, it like it could have been anybody else but Danny Torrance <laughs> in that. Mm-hmm. It, it sounds awfully shoehorned in there. I don't know. Oh, check this out. This music you're hearing is the only music in the whole movie. Church music. Yeah, powerful. The only fucking music. He wanted no music. This isn't a fucking movie. Yeah, this is you're watching a real fucking crime unfold. Is she praying to God to give her strength in doing what she's about to do, or forgiveness? Yeah, that's the good fucking, that's the dank shit that they, they don't specify. Uh, so you could take it however you want. What did she say? She said like something generic, like give me strength. Something like that, yeah. Gotcha. Nice. And Joe Bob brought that up. It's dark. It's nice. She's wearing all black, too. That's how you know she beats fucking business. If only all rape victims could have this mentality like she bounces back that quick where she's like okay i'm gonna tear some ass yeah it's not that easy in real life uh there's a whole grieving process that gets in the way of that shit well there's a reason why the majority of rapes go unreported it, you know yeah. it, and even if they do what are they you have to go get a rape kit done right away before you shower but you have to understand if somebody's getting raped man the first thing they want to do is get clean Right, mm-hmm. and they probably feel horrible. They feel dirty, and they just want to get in the shower, and they just want to fucking. I, it's it's so hard. the The expectations that you that are put on rape victims to abide by in order to take somebody down are just ridiculous, and it sucks. It's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see the scar. How it probably looks in 
real life. Dude, yeah, I saw it. And even then, I, I can only imagine uh, part of it, too, is just shame and embarrassment. Can you imagine? I mean, let's just hypothetically, if you got fucking railed and raped and shit like that, it would be weird. Like, I, uh, first of all, I'm in a lot of pain here. And, uh, well, we'd be, we'd be going through the ass. We'd probably have a lot of fucking bleeding going on. We might need a hospital. Yeah, there, there's also uh, instances where people, uh, they, they're in denial about it. Like, uh, uh, like uh, not like, oh, it didn't happen, but like, oh, maybe I wasn't raped. Maybe maybe I, 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 I did something that gave them the wrong idea. And like, when people talk about that, like, uh, mm-hmm. people get that whenever they uh, get in a car accident. Like, yeah. uh, you, uh, people who just leave afterwards, usually it's because they're in denial. And they're like, I was sure I didn't fucking hit it. Yeah, they they got to justify the shitty choice they made. Yeah. They got to justify the shitty choice they made so they could sleep at night so they tell them that. I think everybody does stuff like that. Right? Mm. And yeah, I guess you have to. And and that sucks. That's why I I don't know, man. That's how I feel anybody is capable of doing anything heinous that you would you would think nobody should be able to do is people convince themselves of things and people that really want to be selfish and live these lives where they can take advantage of people and rape people or hurt people i think they literally get to a point where they're desensitized where they just shut off their moral compass right or they tell themselves certain things like that so they can get by and i think they do it so much to where eventually like i said it's just kind of permanently shut off i don't know it's the only thing i can explain but yeah, that's that's brutal, man. The car wreck thing, I would feel terrible. You know, I'd be up early in the morning, nine o'clock news, checking it like crazy, like, oh my god, oh my god, do they die? Do they die? Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's horrible. But no, I mean, so let's say if you got raped or whatever, Zach. I mean, let's just assume you could get a. You weren't that badly hurt because I think as a guy, you might be fucking extra damaged. I don't know. I'm not trying to minimize the damage of a violent rape on a female, but. I, you would be pretty humiliated, right? Mm-hmm. You'd be pretty humiliated. And I could see you not working up the courage to say something in the time you would have to say something. I fucking don't know. but mm-hmm. And la- you just want to forget it, probably. I want to forget about it. Yeah. Dude, it'd be tough to forget about it when your ass is fucking hurting for like a month. Hell yeah. Uh, mine wouldn't, though, because I'm used to it. <laughs> Dick, you're a, you're a sailor. <laughs> Would be like, man, this is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. You're just going right in. <laughs> exactly. Like, were you already pre-lubed? It'd be funny, though, if if you reached over in the nightstand while he was mounting you and you, you pulled out some lube and gave it to him. I'd probably piss him off because, like, I could, uh, my shit's so loose, I could take a shit without you have to wipe afterwards. Oh, you would shotgun blast his cock once he pulled out? <laughs> could get all over we had to we had to bring it back into a joke territory because it got serious for a second. It really did. It's not it's not like us. Oh yeah, we've been talking about a lot of stuff. We've been talking about child murder, fucking docs, and yeah, th- this movie in general, and yeah, this fucking uh, guy that everybody sees in their dreams. Think he's retarded in their dreams? <laughs> I mean, dog. I never even saw that meme before you sent it. Oh, really? I remember that was. Uh, the, you ever heard of the band Full of Hell? Yeah, they have a shirt with that meme on it. Really? They, they put out a, an album or an EP with that meme on it. Yeah, I almost caught them live last year. Yeah, their their stuff is hit and miss with me. And some of it's uh, uh, like I like that collaboration album they did with somebody. I think that's like their best material. And then, like their new album, it's like, oh, it's too, uh, uh, I don't know, thrashy for me or something. Have you uh, heard of that new band? They just, this past year, they released their first album, Vain. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've heard some of it. So, it's fine. It's it's nothing like spectacular or anything, but it's kind of interesting because it kind of sounds like Converge, right? Mixed with Dillinger, but with Deftones and Slipknot. It's very... It sounds very 1999 in a lot of ways. Yeah, that's what I heard. It was like a an, an old uh, metalcore kind of record. Yeah, yeah. It's a hodgepodge of different bands you could throw in there. Uh, and even the cover looks like some 
new metal 1990 cover. Yeah, it, mud vein. Mud vein. It looks like a mud vein cover, really. It does. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. And yeah, I've actually listened to it a couple of times because I saw, I heard some people talking about it, name dropping it. And I'm like, yeah, it's really nothing new. It sounds like something that would have came out and it uh, 10, 15 years ago. And even then it wouldn't have been anything revolutionary, but it's not bad either. I'm like, all right, it is what it is. I, I don't know why I brought that up. We were talking about those bands and it made me think of that, but, but it's what it's, I, I do like albums like that where they're under 30 minutes, you know, and they're just yeah beats to the head. Sometimes and you could li- you literally go to the gym and you listen to an album three times. Mm-hmm. That's why people like rain and blood so much because I think the things like 28 minutes long and it just doesn't stop. It just kind of rolls into another track until it's done. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool. This is uh see everybody watching the movies thinking like is she gonna kill the retarded guy? Uh was she uh was she gonna hold him to the same uh <clears throat> she gotta hold him accountable. Fuck yeah. Like the other guys. Fuck yeah. And she had yeah, she don't gives no fuck. Yeah. Oh man. Why does he hate her? Cause I I don't know. She's tempting him. How dare you tempt me? He is the worst acting retarded person like it's almost comical you know i hate you and i and like i said i i really hate to use that word but he's have you ever met somebody that had a mental handicap that was like that no they sound like it looks like one of the actors that was in the ringer with johnny knoxville (laughs) where they're really hamming it up you you talk different no how come you talk different like what the fuck I'm Chucky. Wanna play? <laughs> I know any movie. Ask me a movie. <laughs> Jaws. That's a good movie. <laughs> I gave you the. You scratched it in broad daylight. You scratched it. <laughs> you picked it up in broad daylight and you scratched it. I love that movie, and that's very un PC. But I think it movie's hilarious. I've seen it once, and I remember those lines from it. It to- it toes the line because you want to cry exploitation because most of the actors are normal guys pretending to be mentally retarded, which is kind of offensive. Mm. But at the same time, they have a couple of people that really are. So it's like, oh, and, and the main one is. I'm like, was that? You think that was them playing damage control? Like, well, we got to get a real one in here. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Like, we didn't get pissed off so easily back then. Oh, it would not fly today. And it's weird the the shit we get pissed off about because it's like we don't get pissed off when Martin Lawrence puts on a fat suit. He's not appropriating fat culture. He's not wearing fat face. <laughs> but you know anything uh, anything else uh, is on. Like, oh yeah, you can't uh, you can't do that. It's weird. I, I don't know. I but I do wonder if if that was them. Like I said trying to play damage control and be preemptive by putting real people with the uh, conditions in there too. Cause then it becomes like, well, you know, I got a friend who's black, so I'm not racist type of thing, you know? No, oh. I, I don't know, but I unashamed to say the movie's hilarious. And that says something that you can remember those quotes after only watching it once. <laughs> that That's a testament. It's, it's funny. Back when it came out too. It's well, like 2004 or something. It was a long time ago. Something like that, yeah. What's interesting is, it sucks because that to me that's what Johnny Knoxville is going to go down for outside of Jackass, and he made that at the height of Jackass, and it really is. It holds up. It's going to be his son-in-law. Where even after Johnny Knoxville and Polly Shore are long dead, and maybe they consider they're considered to be has-beens, we're still going to think those are really good movies. Like those those are classics. Those are they have their place. What do you think about how she uh, wait wait until he was going to come to kill him? That's dark. That's savage. Extra cool. Oh, because he was actually going to come this time? Yeah, she wanted to make sure. Oh, yeah, you came this time. And that's what she says later. She's like, he finally came. When she tells uh, the the leader that she killed him. Wait, so he did come? Where did he come at? He didn't let her. Yeah, according to the movie, she just kind of let him, let him come inside her, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this movie, uh, yeah, she probably wouldn't have wanted that to happen. Yeah. But, you know, for the the sake of the, the fucking, uh, you know, the irony, the movie went was there. Was it uh, all for the one-liner? Also, she could say. So, was it, I wonder if it was her having somewhat pity on him and treating him a little bit higher above the rest and kind of giving uh, a dying prisoner his last meal, per se. 
You could say that, yeah. That's ew. So he let it come in her mouth. No, just in the jitey. Oh wait. Ah, oh, no way. Who would fucking do that? I don't know. Maybe he didn't. She just he he was ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, uh, and then that's when she started killing him. That would be way better if he just like Jack. He started coming while he was hung, hung on the uh, <laughs> hanging from the tree. We just see it seeping out while he's hanging there. As he's being hanged, she's like ah, it starts spurting out. I mean, donk. See, that's what the the remake should have done. It's interesting. That's crazy, man. She's she gives no fuck. She takes no prisoners. She's dedicated, man, to to kind of go through. Basically, nobody wants to relive those memories. She's reliving it all within a day and just going, going hard. Yeah, she's reliving it so she can get them where she wants them. I'm surprised they all go for it, though. You'd think that some of these guys would be like, "No, I've already had that. Get out of my face." Yeah, they're stupid. They're fucking uh, dumb. Uh, uh, she challenges their ego, I think, is uh, what, what she ends up doing uh, to get up uh, where she wants them. Uh-huh. Well, I would imagine the whole reason she got raped to begin with was a power, a dominance thing. And uh-huh. so why would they find it attractive that she's coming onto them and she's leading, right? Like the bathtub and jerking them off. She's the, aggre- she's the one that's being aggressive in the situation. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they see it as two totally different things. Maybe before it was a power, a dominance thing. And then when she approaches the leader guy in the bathtub, cuts his dick off, then it's actually they're they're separating as an intimate thing. Oh, this chick's coming on to me. It's totally different. Yeah. It's a different kind of award point on their tally board, right? Mm. No one brags to their friends, hey, I fucking ra- we raped a chick last night. That doesn't really count on the scoreboard, I would think. I wouldn't think. Mm. I don't know. See, this is weird. Just now we're seeing her get revenge on the leader. Technically, he's not the last one. You think they would save him for the last, but she get, she takes him out here, and then uh, the next two are really uh, just kind of throwaway guys, and uh, she takes them out really easily. And that's the last one. You see, uh, I I always thought that was weird. Like they should have reversed those. Am I correct though? It's the leader that gets it in the bathtub, or no? Am I getting yeah. mixed up? Okay. He gets it the word. I think that's the most. Even though we don't see anything technically, this is it's the most effective like dick chopping scene in a movie. For some reason. All the more reason why they should have kept it climactic, and they should have put him at the end. Yeah, maybe they just liked uh, the the ending beat on the uh, in the ocean better, uh, or on the lake, or whatever. Do you think the dick? amputation in Hostel 2 was Eli Roth paying homage? Uh, maybe. Not too many people did cutting off of dicks. Or like Cannibal Ferox or whatever too did it like that. Yeah, I guess you're right. I haven't watched Hostel 1 or 2 since they came out. I saw them each in theaters. I think that's the only time I ever saw them, I think. Mm -hmm. Do they hold up? Have you watched them? Uh, It's been a while. Um, I remember thinking the the first one it was boring. It dragged. It was too. It, the, I mean, it picked up at the end, but the first two acts, man. See, I thought the first one could have been better if they played it more like a revenge movie. Mm. If like he got out uh, sooner in the movie, and more of the movie was him hunting them down yeah. or something. I remember at the time when I saw the second one, I was like, oh, I gave it props for reversing, you know, turning the tables and having it the perspective of the. The, the hunters and the buyers, you know, to do the rich guys that bought into it. It was interesting, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I just remember that one scene with DJ Tanner's fucking girlfriend from Roseanne getting her throat slit on the one chick in the bathtub. The, yeah, that's the most memorable scene in the movie. It was pretty gross. The virgin blood. Uh, which one had the gang, the gang of kids that were, was that the first one? The that was the first one. Yeah. I wouldn't, we should do commentaries for those sometime. It's mm-hmm. for shits. We could probably knock out a whole Eli Ross exploitation in a fucking two weeks. Yeah. You know, did we We already did one of them. I don't like women giving me orders. The delivery that reminded me of uh, Polly from uh, fucking uh, Abbeville 2, where he's like, I got a bullet for anybody trespassing. <laughs> Whatever he says, he's like, trespassing. You stay out of this, father. <laughs> Beating the fuck out of his wife and kids in front of the father in his house. Yeah. Those were the days, man. Back in the days where you could invite the fucking father to bless your house and drink and beat the fuck out of your family. And they couldn't really say anything because you don't meddle with other people's way of raising their family. Exactly. What the fuck? 
I I do that to uh, like amuse myself. Like uh, uh, like something like uh, I always think of that scene. Like if I'm in the house at night and I hear something, uh, it's probably a dog or something. But just uh, fucking amuse myself. I'll, I'll I'll say like, hey buddy out there, I got a bullet for anybody trespass. <laughs> Burt Young is my favorite character actor, man. One of, if not the, uh, you know, for Polly alone. But I, I love him in that movie, too. Even though he's essentially the same guy. Mm-hmm. I guess he's technically a little worse. He Technically, I think they're the same. He's the same level of abusiveness. But Rocky was like a PG movie, so I think they can only show so much. <sighs> I mean, it's like, well, we have to tone him down. It's this type of movie. But you can tell if they gave Rocky an R rating, there would have been a few... Uh, Scenes of him slapping around Adrian. Yeah. You know, he's basically the same type of dude. I thought it was weird he did Hamilton 2 after doing Rocky. Yeah. I mean, he was, I think he was nominated for a Best Supporting Actor Oscar, for God's sake. So what do you, what's the natural next step in your career? A fucking horror movie with incest in it. A sequel to a horror movie with (laughs) with incest in it. That's that's the kind of guy I want to be. I want to know that guy. I love Amityville too, but I also feel it's also just the biggest shame because I I really want it to be a perfect movie because mm-hmm. I because I like it so much and you like that first two thirds so much it's like man I really wish this didn't shit the bed in the last scene at last uh yeah I don't even think it shits the bed really it's just fucking the pacing just gets thrown out of whack you're right it doesn't shit the bed the pacing is just all fucked up in that third act because the movie really feels like it ends after. The house when he kills his family. I think I think we talked about this in the commentary because I I think it's the way I've always felt. They should have woven in the narrative of him being locked up throughout the movie as if do like the interview the vampire thing, right? Yeah, like uh, show like uh, maybe it starts out with the aftermath. Uh, Don't show the bodies because that would ruin that they die. But just kind of him kind of going to jail. They kind of, oh, three weeks earlier and then kind of throughout the movie. And it paces so that the ending where he goes back to the house is more towards the end with the uh, where he kills the family out of the dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could do that. You could do that. You could do like an interview. Uh, sorry, you could do an interview the vampire type thing or whatever, where he's already in lockup. Tell the story or do the three weeks earlier, whichever way you're saying. But make it to where the end of the movie shows the killing of his family, and then after that, then we move to present day, and then he escapes and goes to the church yeah. or something, right? You know what I mean? And then it's like that way. That way, you only have to sit through another five ten minutes max after the actual killing, and it's still climactic. I don't know. Mm. I I wish I could get my hands on it and edit it. It play, it kind of plays like uh, fucking uh, watching a band play live, and then uh, uh, all, then they're done, and then you gotta wait for the next band to come in to sound check. Yeah, it breaks <laughs> up the the flow, and I wonder. It's too bad, you know. People do it with music all the time. Release remixed albums. Why can't we remix mo- some movies? <laughs> I mean, though, that that's actually sacrilege. I wouldn't want that, but mm. that movie. It's like I think it could be so much better. I'd be very interested. Didn't they do that with? What was that weird Exorcist sequel they released like 10, 15 years ago in theaters? They had two versions. Yeah. The, you talk about the the original where they put out the ex, uh, the version that had her crawling down the stairs. No, no, no. They made a sequel. What was it called? Oh, yeah. They made the – there was two versions of the prequel. The prequel. They, why, they, and I, think, I didn't see either one of them, but they were like two complete versions, right? Like two different movies. Yeah. One of them came straight to a DVD – and one of them went to theaters and then DVD. And the one that came straight to DVD is actually on Prime. Oh, really? Is that the better one? Have you seen them? I've never seen either of them either. I kind of want to watch it. I, it's a movie you really forget exists. Yeah. You really forget it exists. I need a Wikipedia of that because I, I want to go down that rabbit hole and look it up because I might. I remember my mom and dad never saw movies. They hated going to the theater. But when that movie came out some 10, 15 years ago, they actually went and saw it. And I was like, oh, okay. And I don't remember what they said about it, but uh, The Exorcist. I'm going to look it up and bookmark it so I don't forget. You didn't even say anything about that sweet-ass 70s bush she had, man. She did. That shag rug. That old shag rug give me lap dance, boy. My Johnson swinging. Foom. Foom. That's dark. Balls going one way. Johnson going the other way. She looks pretty hot Ball Johnson dance. Yeah, she does. Her uh, body's perfect and... Very petite. Should we be objectifying her body on a rape movie and that kind of weird? 
<laughs> Does that put us on a similar level as these guys? You know what I mean? Is this like the hairdo is give is doing it for me? Yeah. Is I don't it? Know why. Is this the appropriate venue to be complimenting on her tits? I think that's what they wanted, though. Like, oh yeah, she's a uh, uh, yeah, she uh, look at what she's doing. The does uh, she fucking she cuts his dick off? We least expect it. I am not a fan of. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the bush, man. It just whenever I see a bush like that, that that's that big and that unkempt and that free roaming, I just imagine it has to smell like piss. <laughs> you know, like how do they how do they piss and it not fucking get some residue in there and stank? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, uh, my dick, uh, like uh, if can't you don't smell. trim, it probably doesn't. Your your dick can't smell. What do you care? Yeah. Got it. All right, so when's it? She's really building up the tension with this. Is she going to do it now? Oh, yeah, here we go. Most iconic and memorable scene of the whole movie. I've only seen this movie once, actually. Really? Uh, maybe twice. I take it back. See, I think I think it's a good uh, rape revenge movie. I might have seen it twice, but yeah. I always, uh, I always like revenge movies, uh, period. Yeah. Like, yeah, rape revenge movies. Uh, when you had the sleazy uh, fucking grindhouse... Uh, aspect to it, it makes it better oh. usually to be brutal, dude. Her, her, her rack is pretty rocking. She's ah, uh, she's cute. She cute. Yeah, dude, this is brutal. This almost hurts me. It's like you want to feel, you don't want to feel bad for the bad guys, but it's kind of hard not to for a second. Yeah. The w- oh, it's so fast. He doesn't even realize it. It was just such a nick. I bet you that's the way it would be too. Yeah, the way the blood pl- plops up there, it's like ah, oh. ah. Oh. Oh, that's dog. Yeah, I gotta soak it all in for a second. Like he doesn't realize that's. Is he telling us to look at what she's done to him? You know what I mean? Is he telling the audience? That's so weird. Look at what she's done to me. Who says that to themselves? Nobody says that. He re- he referred to himself in the, well, I don't know, the second person. Oh. Uh, it's pretty brutal, man. I think that's the way it would really go, though. Like, you wouldn't notice what just happened exactly, and it would take you a minute. And then she doesn't kill him. She lets him fucking suffer. It's dog. Well, surely. Do you think he's going to bleed out, or do you think you could stop yourself? Do you think you could stop the bleeding? There'd be too much. Probably not with anything in that bathroom. Yeah, I don't know, man. That'd be crazy. Ugh, dude, that's hurting me. As dog. That's hurt me, man. How do you piss? Do you just piss out of what's left of your urethra? Yeah. Does it just squirt out of like a like a busted hose? What if she didn't get like uh, all of it? Like she got the dick, but like uh, there's still like a tube that kind of halfway comes out. Oh, like the urethra tube is coming out of the fleshy part, <laughs> like a straw. Hey, this part's pretty fucked up. It's pretty cool where she's just enjoying it, basking in the sounds of his agony. Yeah. That's pretty brutal. Oh, there's some music. You lied. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the the music she plays here, too. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no in, mu- in the movie music. Like, no score. Yeah. All the music you hear is, like, something on the radio. Or in the church. That's just being played. Gotcha. So, did she lock him in the bathroom, too? Yep. Okay, that's fucking brutal, man. Fuck it, and she doesn't give no fuck. See, uh, this could have been the ending. The, the, the credits just start rolling. Yeah, it really could have been, man. See, I don't even remember how the other two guys die, to be honest with you. It's kind of, it almost feels tacked on in a way. Like they like they almost forgot, like they were such throwaway characters. That, Holy shit, we forgot there was two other guys that did it. Fuck, we better go uh, film that scene real quick. See, I remember the, I mean, of course I remember the dick chop and I remember the, I remember the dreamer guy that hung by the tree and stuff and shit. I remember that, but I don't remember these other two. It almost seems like, oh, we're out of buddy. Uh, let's just kill the other two guys uh, in one foul swoop. Just real quick. I gotta say the movie's picked up its pace, man. Like it's, it's, it's gone by really quick. It feels like just a second ago, we had an hour left. Mm-hmm. Now we got 10 minutes left. Yeah. Ugh. He didn't get very far. He didn't, he didn't get no far. That's what happens. That's what happens when you get your cock fucking uh, cut off. You don't get very far. She looks like, oh, the way she was dressed, she almost looked like she could have been in the 90s. She didn't even look uh, very dated to me. That chick. Mm-hmm. He's wearing some American Gladiator suspenders. <laughs> yeah, 
God, fucking uh, the, she, Bob yelling at the kid for uh, being be to his little sister. Uh huh. Is it making them reflect? Like, oh, probably. Yeah. Yeah, we we should we should be nice to girls. She's right. I used to have a sister too and a mother. They're probably thinking that. Mm -hmm. Why you fucking retards always hanging out here? What's going on? Wait, is she related? Who's she asking about the whereabouts of? Who's she related to? Uh, maybe uh, the guy we just saw die. Mm. I think he's the only one that works there. They just hang out there. Interesting. This is like the group of friends from King of the Hill gone bad, right? <laughs> this is when they ran out of fucking Alamo beer and they had, no they and they had nothing else to do. Yeah, somebody fucking, uh, they couldn't hang out in the backyard anymore for the fence. So, this really must be tacked on because the movie's got less than 10 minutes left, probably even less than that with credits, and she's going to knock both these guys out in just the last handful of minutes. Mm -hmm. I, re I really don't get why they didn't move it around. They probably could have did it pretty seamlessly. Yeah. Maybe they talk about all the commentary, I don't remember. Yeah, it happens while they're in the boat. Is that the same boat that Angela's dad got killed in in Sleepaway Camp? <laughs> That guy kind of reminds me of the dad, that dude in the front. Hey, they're both gay, too, like the two guys. <laughs> I don't think they are. No, no, they're not. They could be. <laughs> no, man, they were all man when they were fucking taking turns on that chick, right? Right, bro? Yeah, maybe that, oh. Maybe uh, we're, we're, we're seeing into that. They're fucking, uh, they are gay. They had to prove to themselves that they weren't gay. Like, uh, we can fuck this chick. Uh, Johnny did it. Do it for Johnny, man. Do it for Johnny. <laughs> Neither one of them came. They just both put on their best poker face. Ah, uh, yeah. They confide in each other. Yeah, man. I didn't. That's why she almost forgot about because they never even really stuck it in. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, they were just pretending. That's fucked up. See, she she kind of just moved on. They they're just annoying her now. They're just, they're just another nuisance in her life. They should have made a sequel in which it kind of became, where she turned into like Angela, where she just became a slasher herself. And she became vengeful against all men. Well, they are making a sequel now, but yeah, I'm not doing that idea. But I mean, like, a, you know, where she just kind of becomes almost comical. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, which reminds me, for some reason, uh, that made me think of uh, how uh, uh, I found out last night I was watching the, the, the Blu ray of uh, Brain Scan. Uh, they did an uh, interview with the, the screenwriter. He was like, Oh, originally my script, uh, the Trickster was never in the movie. He was just a voice on the phone. And they uh, they threw him in there to rewrite because they wanted to make him uh, the franchise. Uh, they uh. wanted to make another Freddy Krueger. And uh, he basically said, uh, and towards the end of that, he said, uh, yeah, it still surprises me when people uh, come up to me and say, oh, you wrote. And he's like, yeah, I wrote seven. And they're like, no, you wrote a uh, brain scan. And he's like, that's uh, crazy. Uh, and I realized that people still like this movie. And I, I recently listened to a podcast that uh, covered it. And I love that podcast. I was like, holy shit. What if that was BTM podcast you listened to? Dude, it could have been. We should we should Google it and see how many brain scan. Yeah, we we released that around the time they would have been working on that Blu-ray. So yeah, it's possible. And you know, when we have one, if it's if it's an obscure enough movie, and not too many people have done it, generally those videos of ours have a lot of hits. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like fucking Showdown Little Tokyo. Mm -hmm. When you Google Showdown Little Tokyo or you our video comes up, a because it's got as many hits as it does, but there's not a whole lot of competition there. And so, yeah. yeah, maybe that was the same type of situation with brain scan. I'm kind of torn on my stance on the trickster because I get what he's saying. On one hand, I love the trickster because he was quotable and Riverman and I bonded over this cheesy fucking mascot looking dude. On the, on the other hand, the movie itself and the psychological, did he really do it? Did he not do it? You could have played around a lot more with that whole notion and it would have been more effective if it was just a voice in the phone, to be honest yeah. with you. It would have been a probably. lot. It probably would have been a better "quote unquote" movie, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But, but yeah, I don't know. It'd be hard to imagine it without the the cheesy trickster. So mm -hmm. I don't know. See, look, this is how she kills him. She just kind of goes back and forth in the boat and uh, hits him, fucks with him a little bit, and then yeah, I think she has a machete in there with her. Hey, how come she can drive that boat so good? She's a woman. 
Yeah, women don't know how to drive boats. Fuck it up, boobies. Only boobies. You never see a, a woman driving a boat in real life. I rest my case. <laughs> see, look, uh, now she's got the fucking uh, raised bait. See, she's becoming the bad. It's so uh, anti-fucking women. Anti-woman, this movie. Uh, hopefully, any women out there listening know, you know that we're just joking. I'd like to not only retain the women demographic that we have, but increase it. You know, Zach... The ones we don't have, they're not listening. Hey, our no women listening to this. Our, our demographic says if you go off the analytics, 20%. We kind of maintain 20%. At one point, we were 25%. Let's get those 5% back. I'm proud of that. You know, it's it's a fairly niche thing. And, it, uh, you know, one out of four or five being women isn't too shabby, you know. But I'd like to see it evened out a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. But all I know is when we have women that comment, it's only the angry ones. Because I remember... I, I, the one that sticks out to me is that there was one uh, woman who commented on our good son commentary, and she was very offended. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> oh, so you guys went right into pedophilia? Like, that was a... <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you thought of was pedophilia? Yeah, a delete, or whatever she said. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I have to... Part of me wanted to say, well, Zach's always talking about that, so, but I, I, I want to believe that it was relevant, and I'm sure we saw Mac... Macaulay Culkin, and we probably started talking about Michael Jackson, and that's where that's probably where it came from, you know, the Michael Jackson shit. It could have been yeah. a hardcore MJ fan. That could have been what it was. Somebody that was like a, yeah. a, a hardcore Michael Jackson sympathizer and defender, you know. My, Michael didn't do it. You fuck boys. Yeah. Who knows? We'll never know now. Oh, we'll know. I'll know in the afterlife. First thing I'm gonna ask the the Lord and Savior, like, did Michael Jackson do it? And he'll be like, ask him yourself. I'm like, oh, yeah. Hey, did you do it? And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dog. Oh, I probably just made the audio really hot there. I saw my spikes. When I did that. Oh, that's fine. I backed up, too, man. You can't. It can't contain the hee hees. The registers. Exactly. You can't do hee hee without going to a high register. Fuck it, that's what they, they need a special microphone for whatever he records his albums. Yeah. Because the hee-hees would just fucking blow it all out of proportion. Hey, he worked with Chris Tucker, man. He's in one of those spoken word bits, right? In You Rock My World? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, watch the video. for. He's on the album, too. But if you watch the video, he's in the video with Michael Jackson. Why would you ever let Chris Tucker talk on your album? But in the video, they're coming to a club because all his music videos were long form, like movie style, a lot of them. And him and Michael are entering a club and they're both kind of dressed like pimps, you know. Oh, look, this is obvious what they're setting up. Why would you fucking just sit there of all places? Yeah, it's fucked up. When you're asking the chick that just killed your friend, hey, don't don't kill me. That's a pretty cool kill, though. It works. Yeah, he should. Uh, I would have dived and swam as far out as I could and kept trying to stay underwater you know mm -hmm. yeah he wasn't thinking logically he's acted locally and we're acting globally go ahead and finish your michael jackson chris tucker shit well it was just this thing where they were walking into a club and they were both kind of dressed like pimps sideways hats really nice suits and stuff and as soon as they come in um, Chris Tucker eyeballs a chick and it's obviously going to be the girl that's the object of the music video of michael's affection right Mm -hmm. And he's singing to her and he's all like, oh, man, she, she's like, she fly, Michael. She sees she, she, Oh, she just don't know. And he's kind of being all <laughs> apprehensive. Then he goes, she is banging. <laughs> and, and it's the weirdest delivery ever. He's like, he's like, again, she look good. <laughs> That's what he's saying. She is banging. She, she is look banging. good. That's a die. That's got to be a sound drop. We'll have to watch it after we're done recording. We'll watch the video at the beginning. And it's fucking hilarious because he sounds so unconvincing as a straight man. <laughs> <laughs> she looked good. <laughs> he did that thing where he didn't pronounce the D at the end. She looked good. She looked good. She is banging. See, uh, they could have. There was even that prolonged shot where they could have read the credits at the end of the the other uh, the music uh, ending where she was sitting on the chair. You know what would have been? You what would have been even better? What if they if they did? change up the sequence and she killed the leader at the end and the bathtub scene was the end. That's what I'm saying, yeah. The credits were rolling as he was bleeding out in the tub. <laughs> no, that would have been cool, man. We had to like watch him for two minutes. Out of a dock. That would have been fucking intense. So I don't I don't know why nobody pitched that idea. So they should have 
Or they should have went with it if somebody did. Anyway, pretty cool, man. And the movie has a good pace. Mm. It really does have a good pace about it. Uh, let me go ahead and get to some comments here. Hell yeah. All right. The one and only Brattler, the Brattle Snake. He comments on our commentary for Halloween 2018. If you guys haven't checked that out, it's up on the channel and podcast services. It was a fun time. He says they should have called Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Season of the Witch, a Halloween story. So you want us to reverse it is what you're saying, you know, and uh, maybe uh, lay off some of the expectations it might have had. I could see that. Uh, and he goes, this movie is miles above the last three Halloween movies. That goes without saying, man. That's the Rob Zombies and Resurrection. Yeah, of course. Uh, Let's see here. And then on the Psycho 4, the beginning commentary, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read his since we just did. Brattlesnake, you left us a plethora of commentary here. You say... Anthony Perkins' son, Oz, played young Norman in Psycho 2. I think we were... Yeah, I noticed that while I was editing it, but uh, I just kept it in there. No, but all good. We knew Brattlesnake would get our back on that if we missed it. Anthony Perkins' wife was killed on 9-11 from one of the plane crashes. I did know that, too. We didn't bring that up, but I knew that. Mm -hmm. That's messed up. Can you imagine the luck? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. The odds... Uh, let's see here. Psycho 4 was a cable movie originally aired in 1990 on the Showtime channel. Well, that explains why it was so oh. fun. That makes sense because it was so yeah. – I just couldn't – I'm like, well, it's this violent. Clearly, they made it for a hopeful theatrical release, but didn't even think about it being a, a cable cable movie channel thing. He says, the Psycho 4 house was in Universal Studios in Florida and was taken down. The Psycho house from 2 and 3 is at Universal Studios lot in California. And that's messed up because – I didn't see that on the tour. If that that's fucked up. If you have the psycho house, you include that in your damn tour. Yeah. And then they built a new one for the show that you're watching now. And then they tore that down right after it was done filming. They they built a whole new one. That's what that is. Yeah. I think they shot it in like uh, Canada or something. Maybe. I was wondering what was up with that. By the way, I just started season five. I'm wrapping up the first episode of season five. You're going through it quick. I, I'm all about it, man. It it got me. It grabbed me by the jugular. It That's wrote me cool. in. It's good. So the Bob, it was the Bob that did it. She hot as fuck. <laughs> she's got she's got these eyes that are baking for a cum shot. <laughs> did I say I, I mixed begging? I mixed begging. <laughs> listen, I mixed begging and aching together, and I said baking, bacon. I thought you said bacon, bacon. Well, I, I was mixing. <laughs> I, did, I couldn't decide. I couldn't decide if I wanted to say begging or aching, so I just combined the two. I'm like, I want it all. She got you. Be you, that sounded very sexy. She's got beautiful eyes, is what you meant to say. <laughs> I, I decided I wanted it all, just like she wanted all of it on her fucking eyes. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants that. That burn. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She's an attractive woman. Uh, she's twice the age as her sister, the one that's on American Horror Story. Yeah, I, think I, I remember when I, I, I thought they were uh, daughter and mom at first. And then I was like, oh, they're sisters. Yeah, I think I told you that. But they're, and she's, and I knew she was much older. I mean, obviously, but I think her sister is currently 24. She's pretty young. And she, she's in her upper 40s, if not 50. She looks fucking good for her age. Yeah, her she's age. like, all, she's almost twice her age. That's insane. Uh, but she's a beautiful woman. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, on the Halloween. No, I I, I want to come at her eyes too. <laughs> you could have you could have one, and I'll have one. We'll share. <laughs> We're buddies. Yeah, and we could we could ask her to compare afterwards and tell us who was better. Who's uh who's burnt the most? She'll she'll pull us each aside separately at different times and be like, "Don't tell Aaron I said this, but your cum shot was the best." And then when she gets me alone, she'll be like, "I don't tell Zach this, but it was all about your load, babe." Exactly. All right. So on the Halloween 28th, that was disgusting. We should have never went off into that fucking thing. <laughs> Halloween 20, I regret it. Halloween 2018 as well. Our boy, David Capper, you uh, laid a couple comments on us. Oh, I'm sorry. On this one, you laid us a long comment. So let me go ahead and read that and give it its due. Uh, you say, this was a very interesting ride. There was an Andy Kaufman-esque aspect to the first two thirds with a sort of tension that weaves in and out of infighting, three-way clashing, fact dropping, and Halloween historianship. That being said, this commentary reminds me how I feel about H2018 itself, a quote, Force Awakens style reboot of a classic. I have a love-hate relationship with the fan service, basically. Uh, at 2244, he comments, 
The Duckman reference is great. So, it would be interesting if you guys did an April Fool's commentary over a film like A Star is Born or some movie that you would never really comment on uh, <laughs> and, and have the entire runtime filled with guests that just fight with each other or you guys. And then you storm off for 10 to 15 minutes at a stretch only to come back drunk. Uh, or he puts drunk in quotations like we could put on a ruse and act and uh, continue fighting. And no one really talks about the film, but everyone gets into roast style arguments. It, it'd be almost like a weird social experiment. Actually, it's kind of a bad idea. Never mind. Oh, and he also says at the end, your theme song is on the way. Oh, fuck yeah. That's got to be dark. We're so excited to hear what you cooked up, man. We're going to love it no matter what it is. And we're stoked. So everybody be on the lookout for that. Uh, and take your time. Don't don't take that as a, as like, hey, rush it or. You know, whatever. Yeah, we're fucking that happy you're even doing it, baby. That's dog. Yeah, man. Take all the time you need, man, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll definitely show what the love it deserves whenever it is you're ready. So thanks, man. Uh, anyway, I did reply to that, and my 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 thing about his idea for the April Fool's shtick, it's it's a great idea, but I'm thinking, man, your troll persona, Zach, is already pretty off the chain and off the hook as it is sometimes. I if we actually said, hey. We're going to do a whole episode where we really want you to go for it and fucking just let the dog out of the cage. I don't think we'd ever see you again. We might lose you completely. You'd be gone. Yeah, I, I think I'm real. I'm starting to realize what it is that's like putting people in a bad mood. And it's like the fucking, uh, you know, overly, uh, you know, uh, sarcastic uh, fucking jokes I make are, are rubbing people the wrong way. I think I'm just being sarcastic and funny. And they're like, they think I'm putting it like I'm fucking mocking them. And, That's 100%. That's 150% yeah. what it is. So, yeah, whatever you get mad, it completely just comes, uh, it hits me by surprise because I'm like, oh no, what what I do? But that's that's a hundred percent what it is. Now that I like whatever I look for it and I know what to listen for, uh, yeah. So I, I'm gonna lighten up on that. I appreciate that. It's so funny, and I guess it doesn't even make sense to even bring it up now. But it's funny because Josh James and I were actually talking about it uh, because we were talking about the the last one we did. I fuck, what was it that we did with Josh James? I, I fuck it, uh, Psycho. So I'm reading it right now. It was a fun commentary, and it turned out great. I don't think it was one of those things where it affected an outside listener, but I went back and listened to it and I'm like, huh, <laughs> like he's, he's kind of really laying into us. Yeah. I, I do this thing. Like I, I, I'm just being sarcastic, but I act like it's the fucking, like I act like the fact that I had to say it. It's like, how dare you guys make me fucking lay this on? Uh, like, uh, like I get pissed off that I have to bring it up. Uh, it's just part of the joke. I can't explain it. Yeah. But yeah. But no, I, I see why it pisses people off. I appreciate that. I would agree with you. And that'd be awesome. Cause I was, if you guys listen to the cycle four commentary, there was that little bit in the middle. I get it. It kind of brings things down a little bit where I'm telling the story about my dad. Yeah, and uh, when I listened to that on the commentary, I felt bad because you didn't get the the reference I made. Yeah, well, it's just <laughs> the South Park reference, and then that was actually a a pretty serious story. And you could obviously argue that it really didn't have any home with that on that commentary. But I'm always happy to when we have stories to share. Right? I'm still mad that you withhold you withheld that that shitty toilet paper story, and you gave it to Josh and the Shiny. That's a fucking great story. That you told yeah. this amazing story. And I almost want you to tell it over here, too, because it's fucking great, because I was dying laughing. But anyway, I feel you. But anyway, so we're talking about the story, though, I was telling on Psycho 4. When I went back to listen to it, I was thinking, just like you told that story and you were able to tell your story. And if you guys go listen to the original time, Zach told it on The Shining. It's great because Matt Wazell's cracking fucking up. And it's just it's it's hard to recapture it. The original time was so good, man. But. That story had its moment, and I listened to the Psycho 4 commentary. I'm like, I'm trying to tell a serious story here, and I felt like it should have been that story's moment, and you weren't letting it have that moment because you were saying these things, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, well, all right. I didn't even think about it. I fuck up. Uh, if you listen closely, you can hear me pissing, too, in the background there. Yeah, I heard it, but it's all good, man, so I appreciate all that feedback, and I, I think you're right, Zach, and I, I think that's great that uh, you noticed that. I think, I think that makes all the difference in the world, and I noticed it on this commentary, too. Uh, David Capper, he also commented on the Psycho 4, the beginning, and he simply says, hashtag cock aficionado is the quote of the commentary. And that quote belongs to Josh James. So thank you, Josh, for contributing that. Yeah, we need to put that on a shirt. That Oh, we need to make him a jersey, a, a Revival House jersey, 
and he'll be the cock aficionado on the back across the shoulders. Exactly. He, he called me it, but he coined the phrase, so he deserves the fucking term now. <laughs> oh, I guess it could be you too. Uh, and then, you know what? I saved, well, sorry, Adrian Mendoza, you had commented on what I believe was the Psycho 4, the beginning commentary as well. And I'm so sorry I accidentally deleted it on accident. I used the YouTube producers app and it's a little wonky. And when I was trying to go to reply to it, I accidentally got rid of it. So, but you basically had said it was a funny commentary and and you were being complimentary. So we appreciate that greatly. You are the Omega and our hats off and a bunch of curtsies to you. So, uh, and I saved one for last that I think is the best for last. And it's one we actually just got like 20 minutes, 20 minutes before we started this commentary. And it's by our motherfucking boy, Antoine Evans. And I bet you guys can't believe that he is commenting on Problem Child 2. And I hope to God, you know what? I hope 10 years from now, we're still getting you and Mario, both your comments on these commentaries. You guys keep it alive. And I fucking love it. I really do. I'm not even joking. And you know what? If there's ever a week that goes by that neither one of you does comment on these, I'm going to send out a police report. Something's wrong with you guys. I'm going to send out the cops to go check your homes to make sure you guys didn't slip and fall in the bathtub. We need to get them to make their own podcast and just make it reviewing our reviews and commentaries of the, the fucking Child's Play movies. It's it's great, man. Well, Antoine, here's what you said about Problem Child 2. He says, and once a, I'm just going to read it as it's written, right? That's how I normally do it. Is, exactly. is around y'all guy, I can sit through Problem Child 2. This film is nightmare to me. I watch it age nine, 36 now. So, you know, you're you're in our generation though. So I mean fair game, man. I mean, you were around when the movie hit and I don't see how a kid would hate that movie. That movie's fucking dark. Well, they said they liked the first one a bit better, right? In that yeah. thing. So I, Well he said it's a nightmare for him, so he hates it. Oh, this he's talking about the second one. Yeah. Why well, I'm saying why would you hate the second movie? I yeah, I know. If you like if the first one's okay and the second that fucking crazy dance scene. It, it makes that's it. That's all you need. It makes it. It exactly. absolutely is. I, I don't know. And you get to watch Principal Strickland run down the hallway holding his poop stomach. His, yeah. his shit gut. I don't know. Whatever, man. I, I appreciate your opinions and I appreciate your... Remember I, I told Phil and Selmo? Phil and Selmo wanted to kill me because I liked Evil Dead too. But mm-hmm. even he said, you know what? I respect your opinion. It's fine. It's okay. It's all right. And mm-hmm. I respect your opinion. Problem Child 2, unlike Evil Dead 2, uh, is good, right? Well, I, wait, I like Evil Dead 2. I said that wrong. But whatever. You sound like you came when you said that, too. It was dark. Uh, See, I'm going to have to make a soundboard of all the times you make noises like that. Uh, uh. No, it's okay. But thank you, Antoine Evans. We appreciate it, man. Keep those comments coming. And we're always going to listen to you. And we're always going to fucking... We're always going to make a point to read your comments about this fucking movie on air. We'll, we'll always... I'm never going to forget you, man. So you complete us. You absolutely do. We're get, we're we're considering doing fucking junior in love just for you because we know you'll talk about those two. You know what? Consider my ass. We should do it. Oh, I, I I've already fucking decided I'm gonna download it. It's just not in there yet. Throw it in the box. Do it. And I I want to hear what you guys have to say about. It. And that's funny. I don't know. If, did, can we can we call that a request? They talk about it so much. We we're just gonna assume they're requesting us to do junior in love. <laughs> we could do we could do it for request month or we could uh, wait until it's over I, I think we should extend it for two months because uh we still got fucking uh, uh stuff right in the box like uh the fucking ooey bowl movie i agree i agree i agree with you yeah we there's just too much to to get through so well we're getting to it baby don't you worry about it, antoine anyway that's all we got we appreciate you guys joining along again another week hopefully you guys check out all the back content we got we've been throwing out tons of stuff like I said, there's retro rampages out there. There's commentaries out the wazoo. Uh, there's a lot of shit that we still never even got to post, man. So, you know, I, I mean, uh, that's not a horrible problem to have. Like I said, we got the return of the ret- uh, sorry, uh, Deep End, which I'm excited about. So please check out the episode that is more than likely up right now uh, and leave some feedback on that. I, I got to preface by saying, if you guys are really, really into what this commentary and podcast is all about, it might not be your cup of tea. It's a little bit more serious. Actually, it's a lot more serious, but it's it's a it's a good listen, and it gives you a, a different side of someone like myself and the people I have on the show. So hopefully you guys dig that. Leave some feedback. 
Uh, we also got Mac and Zach Save the World. You can find that on the actual Revival YouTube channel. Now, what do you guys have up as of right now on that? Anything new? Oh, fucking ready to rubble, baby. Fucking ready to rubble. Go listen to it. Rock on. Go listen to it. And I don't really know if Josh James would have it out by the time that this is out or not, but if it is, go check it out. And if it's not, uh, go to his channel anyway and give him a sub. But I was recently on an episode of his R-rated horror commentary where we did Bird Shit Box, that newest uh, Netflix film with Sandra Bullock and John Malkovich. And, you know, that was a fun time as well. So check that out. And also, I don't want to miss anything. If you guys prefer to listen to your podcasts, on applicable podcast networks and things or podcast formats. Uh, why wouldn't you? There's links in the YouTube that'll take you to our Apple podcast. It'll take you to our Stitcher, our Google Play store. It'll take you to Google Play store. as makes sense. We're on Google Play and Spotify. I don't know what else we have to be on at this point. I know there's other things, but I think we got the big ones, you know, mm. we got the big daddies in them all. So I do know that if you guys listen to shit over there, usually the commentaries on the podcast formats, they're going to go up early in the day, right? And then mm. the videos are usually ready later in the day. So if you want that fix at the start of your morning, make sure you subscribe to us over there and leave feedback and ratings and stuff on things like Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and Google Play, because that stuff is going to mean the world to us and it's going to help us gain exposure and sort of rise above the ever-increasing mound of shit that's out there now everybody and their mom has a podcast and i'm not saying that's not a beautiful thing because we love podcasts i love podcasts it's great and i'm not saying that we're really any different but you know riverman and i started this about eight nine years ago so we've been at it for a while and i remember fuck i don't know if we ever talked about it on the air on those early episodes or if we talked about it off the record but when riverman had the original idea to start up a podcast he was like, I know it's probably a waste of time because it's pretty much a fucking dead format. Only nerds do these. And at the time, <laughs> it, at the time, it was true. The only podcasts you could get were those underground fucking exploitation horror podcasts. And they were just regular Joes in their basement, right? Eating Totinos, yeah. talking shitty audio quality. They weren't making money. They were doing it because they loved the shit and they knew about it. They were knowledgeable because they were the fans. You know, fast forward and – a few years and now everybody with a pre-installed fan base has a podcast. I don't care if you're ice T or if you're Norm McDonald or who the hell you are, you got a podcast and I do enjoy it like everybody else. But now we got Conan O'Brien's got a podcast. Uh, you got uh Topher grace from 70 show. That guy, he just, he just announced a podcast, dude, all these people who really don't need podcasts as far as like a source of income have podcasts is all I'm saying, but I do love mm -hmm. it though. I I'm all about it. I still listen to all those shows but I like these small shows as well, and I treat them with all the same respect. Anyway, we've been around a while. We want to keep being around, and uh, hopefully you guys will keep growing in numbers and spread the love and help us, you know, get those goals. Hell yeah. That's all we got. We'll check you guys out next week. You guys have been wonderful. We've been Aaron and Zach. Bye-bye, puppets. suicide or something? No, I killed him. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes, I did. I choked him to death with a rope. Come on, you did not. I let Matthew kiss him at me before I killed him. And you know what? Mm. He came. He actually came. 
you've got weird, weird sense of humor.